Good morning. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for Saturday morning cereals. As always, I'm your host, Paul, bringing you the best Saturday mornings. And some weekday cartoons, because, uh, you know, it's funny, and I've said this before, so I'll say it again. I have a ton of, I have several books on Saturday morning cartoons, and, you know, the history of all that stuff. And you know what they always have as a Saturday morning cartoon? G.I. Joe, He-Man, Thundercats, Transformers, all those that were all weekday cartoons. And almost all in syndication. So, I'm like, ah, whatever. We'll, we'll put these cartoons there because you know what? History says they're Saturday morning cartoons. Who am I to argue with history? So, all right. So, you saw last week I put those two cartoons on at the end. Uh, some people brought up the fact that I put Fish Police up there. And it's a mature cartoon. I was like, I don't know if it's mature. It was a primetime cartoon. It was a little more adult-esque. But no more different than like The Simpsons and stuff. Uh, and then Shazam. And I did not think I would get Shazam past uh, the YouTube bots. But here we are. Alright. As always, Saturday Morning Serials is brought to you by are you game the best comic book collectible uh, DVD magic RPG shop located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pip, Ohio 45356. And the Group Therapy TV podcast every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We bring you all kinds of cool people from all different kinds of stuff. I've got several of them that I'm working on right now. Uh, we did skip last week. Uh, I want to take a break. Um, uh, yeah, I don't get, I don't get many breaks. I do three shows a week and I run a shop and I got a family. So I am a busy guy. So, oh, and another thing, uh, I love hearing about all you guys' cereals, uh, talking about cereal last week, uh, about your favorite breakfast and all that fun stuff. Um, I think this week I want to talk about something different. How about favorite snacks or foods or sodas that just don't exist anymore? Stuff that you would love for them to bring back that just aren't there anymore. You know, do you miss, uh, you know, Clear Pepsi? Uh, I don't know why you would miss Clear Pepsi, but that's an option that you could have. Uh, maybe you miss... Uh, 3D Doritos. Uh, maybe you miss Mr. T cereal. I don't know. Whatever you miss, let me know. Just tell me. I I, I got I got to know this week. Uh, because uh, funny story is, is, I worked at a grocery store. My first real job, and Ohio is a testing ground for new product. Uh, so my grocery store that I worked in got product that never went anywhere else. So, or, you know, it may have went someplace else, but not very many places. So we were a test market and, uh, you know, we got a lot of stuff that, that people, like, I remember when we, we were one of the first people to get like caffeine free Pepsi back when it was pa Pepsi free. Um. Which I think is weird. Because if you're drinking Pepsi, which is, you know, 90% sugar, then you worry about the caffeine. But I'm, I'm, I, I don't worry about the caffeine. I worry about the sugar. So, here we go, guys. We're going to bring you another classic that you guys are still liking. Uh, because we're rapidly, really rapidly approaching the end of this series. And that is Visionaries. Uh, this is episode 10. And uh, there's only 13 episodes. So I'm gonna to have to find something to replace this, and I've been working on that. We're 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 testing out new cartoons and stuff, and and with the next episode, next show I'm gonna show here is uh, we're bringing back a, a, one that I've I've ran before, but we're just gonna run it 
like we should. Because uh, what I had before was kind of was not a good quality copy. This is a better one, so we're going with that. But here we go. This is Visionaries. This is episode 10. And this is the trial of the three wizards. Enjoy. It is a time when magic is more powerful than science. And only those who control the magic control destiny. They are the visionaries. I am troubled. It seems that as a result of a misadventure involving the Darkling Lords, three potentially dangerous wizards escaped the wizard's jail. Please accept our sympathies. But what does this have to do with us, Merklin? Yes, we didn't release them. Obviously, he wants us to track them down. The fact of the matter is that I could make it worth your while to track them down. Well, not this time, Merklin. I can't risk my men on a wizard hunt. Besides, we really don't need anything. Our staffs are fully charged with magic. Our cities are thriving. The status of your cities could change. That's not fair either. I am not fair. All right, all right, Merklin. Who are these wizards? Three more varied villains you are not likely to meet. This is the treacherous Falcama. He has already caused a great deal of trouble for me. Do not fail to bring him in. This is the lying Weezer Squeezer, a magician cursed never to tell the truth. And this is the mysterious Bogavas. I have not known him to commit evil, but we must make sure that none of the wizards reaches the Lost Shrine. The Lost Shrine? Where is that? Young one. If I knew where the Lost Shrine was, it would not be the Lost Shrine, now would it? I tell you that, it is rumored to be in the Anarchy Zone, and that is where you should begin your search. Now, be off with you. supposed to find anybody in this mess this place is in serious need of some civilization what's Ektar doing I've done nothing you got no right to bully me after all these years you did plenty back when there were laws to scrape off crust like you now talk all right all right there's been some whispering about wizards they say one got Busted in Deadbark for selling snake oil. What else? That's it, I swear! You said wizards, plural! All right! Another one bought some kind of a, a monk disguise. This coin says you know about a third wizard. Well, yes! Well, that one's headed towards Mount Bellicost with some iron slaves. But be careful, he still has some magic dust. Very good. Now be gone! <laughs> good luck! You'll need it! <laughs> it's funny how the whole world can change, and yet Ektar is still a cop, <laughs> and that dwarf will always be a stoolie. All right, Spectral Knights, here's our plan. We'll divide up and... Uh, perhaps we should go somewhere a little more private. I don't believe this place really exists. Arson, there are a lot of things out here in the Anarchy Zone that you won't believe exist. Just follow my lead. And don't come back! <laughs> Howdy, partner. We're looking for a spell tossing vomit. You better look quick. He ain't gonna be around long. <laughs> 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 
Oh, what misfortune! Spare me, and I will tell you about the lost Tellurian gold shipment. Yes, it will make you all rich. Shiniest gold I ever saw, and it's all yours if you save me from these two. One wrong move, and you're going to have every yokel in the zone after you. Now let me go. We're not bounty hunters, we're lawmen, and we're taking this guy in. Suppose we don't want you taken up, men. Suppose we want him for ourselves. <laughs> that ought to keep him away long enough for me to get us out of here. Disturbs you, my brother. Oh, well, in my deep meditations, I have forgotten the location of a certain scroll. It is an ancient map which shows a lost shrine of ancient times. <coughs> you, you, you shall find what you seek in the fourth chamber, in the third niche, behind the fifteenth pillar, atop the catwalk, under a bust of Dagalus the Eighth. Ah, this is it. What do you suppose the brothers would do if they discovered a blasphemer was in their midst, Bogavus? I shudder at the thought. Then come quietly. And hurry, this place gives me the creeps. I want slaves! I am a shrine to capture! I am Leoric of New Valarak. I hereby emancipate your slaves. And this, this is an outrage. You forget I still possess magic dust. Your snake has encountered some difficulties. Zones! It appears that darkness renders my magic dust useless! Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> yes, these wizards aren't much if they don't have a shrine to back them up. With this. Someone's been fooling with it. It's an ambush! Take cover! Dark Storm, rescue me! I, I bear you no ill will! I suggest we release one of the wizards as a diversion. Then release Falcama. He's getting on my nerves. No, the Darkling Lords don't want him. I've kind of gotten to like Bogavis. All right, then we will release Weezer Squeezer. Ha! Well, run for it. You might just make it. Surely you just. It is dangerous out there. It's more dangerous in here. The wizard must not be allowed to get away! Mount the catapult! Hope I didn't squash you! Whitterquick, inform Merklin that we have captured the wizards and would like immediate transport to the shrine. Yes, Leoric. 
Sheathe these feet in the driving gale. Make swift these legs, or land I sail! Why is he taking so long? Hmm. Perhaps he got lost. Patience, lads. If I'm not mistaken, this is our transport. It sure beats having to hike all the way up the mountain. How could we have been so stupid as to let the spectral knights escape? We could have eliminated them once and for all, and instead we wind up with this loser! I am indeed a loser. Strange. I don't believe I've seen a wizard with such a low opinion of himself before. Oh, mine is well earned. Please accept my apologies for being such a bother to you. One moment. As one liar to another, I think you are prevaricating. As a matter of fact, I believe I have heard of you. You are the one who is condemned to lie. No, that is ridiculous. All right. What color is snow? Black. Is ice hot or cold? Hot, of course. You see, he is that wizard who cannot tell the truth. That's a lie! Do you know where the lost shrine is? Of course not. Then where isn't it? It isn't to the west of here. Oh, we head west! Takeoff was fine, but the landing could be improved. Uh, please accept my apologies. This hand is new. I have not fully trained it yet. Merklin, what do you want us to do with the wizards? I will mete out their punishments. Falcama, do you have anything to say in your defense? No. Then I banish you to the wizard's jail. <laughs> and Bogavus. What of you? I am but a fourth-string player in this game of wizardry. But you are a player. No, in truth I am not. I know no real magic, only illusion. Allow me to test your magic potential. But I warn you, if you lie to me on this test, you will burst into flames and be forever consumed. Will you submit yourself to the test? You don't have to. No, I will take the test. Mages of the mist, clear his name, or let his body erupt in flame. <laughs> Excellent, he's honest. Your mission is still not finished. The wizard Weezer Squeezer is still on the loose. Bring him to me. There isn't a shrine in sight. Weezer Squeezer? Are we near the Lost Shrine? No, far away. Is the Lost Shrine in a mountain? Why, yes, in a tall mountain. But there are no mountains around. That's the point, Cinder. He lies. The Lost Shrine isn't in a mountain at all. Of course, it's underground. That's why it was never found. Oh, Darkstorm, as usual, your insightful intellect has solved a mystery that plagued all of the others. Strange. This tree seems most out of place. Weezer Squeezer, does this lead to the Lost Shrine? <laughs> of course not. What a ridiculous concept. Follow me! <sighs> this place looks like it was once a zoo. That's Benny the Con. I tried to throw him into the slammer 15 years ago. Right now, place your bets. I'll bet. I'll bet you're going to tell me some things I want to know. Officer Ektar, uh, I didn't break no laws here. Only because there are no laws here. I, I never did anything. It was that recon guy. He set me up. Oh? 
funny thing. I'm looking for Recon right now. Him and the Darkling Lords. I... I heard him mention a place. A, a lost shrine or something. And where do we find this lost shrine? I, I don't know, honest. But, but there's something showing a great deal of interest in you in the building across the street. Leoric, there's something watching us. Maybe it knows where the lost shrine is. I say we storm the building and find out. And I agree. Charge! And I thought I might starve to death. Yes, tasty. Landed on me. I like my dagger. Yes. As we used to say in the crime business, this will be an inside job. Stop that. You'll give me heartburn. You want heartburn? I'll give you heartburn. All right. All right, I'll let you out. That's not good enough. You'll also tell us where the lost shrine is. But it's all right. You follow the rutted road until you come upon a Jamahua tree. It is beneath that tree. Very well. Now, open wide. Uh... I get a bad feeling from this foul place. I don't see why. It's just what's left of a zoo. Hurry, hurry, action free! What idiocy are you babbling? Animal escape! Animal escape! Alert park wardens at once! Set track. Whatever he said, awaken the long dead security system! Converge on Sector 7! Escape creatures here! They're converging upon us! That must be the tree he was talking about. Then obviously we must manipulate it somehow. It sounds like fighting. The wizard is escaping! The lizard has been returned! We must escape! before they imprison you, or, or cook you in garlic and butter, or something. <laughs> <laughs> Things are coming from everywhere! It appears that the Darkling Lords have run into a spot of trouble. <laughs> How tragic. Where's Weezer Squeezer? Why should I tell you? None of us gain if the wizard takes power. He went that way. All right, we have to make a dash for it. If he gets to the Shrine Room, this world will grow dark and evil. How are we going to get past those things? Any way we can. Let's use this to our advantage. of a shattered age, I summon you, renew this sage. What do you want of me? I am about to be captured. What do I do? Resist all temptation to do what you would do. More trouble. Hold on. This is what I would do. Therefore, of course, they don't cage knights in human form. <laughs>
shrine at last. And Merkin shall grovel at my feet. I think not, Squeezer Squeezer. And with it, the magic of this shrine. I hope that Weezer Squeezer really suffers for this! And for your crimes, Weezer Squeezer, you will be incarcerated in the wizard's jail for eternity. Please, Merkin, accept my apologies. You need not apologize. I know you are evil and will deceive anyone at the first opportunity. Now get out! I may understand you, but I do not choose to socialize with you any longer. Braybet, please save me! Why should I? And now it is time to reward you with the gold. No, Merklin. I think we can earn our own gold. We need not be paid. We have benefited from our deeds, and that is enough. You know, I still wonder about old Bogavas. Yes, as I have myself. Perhaps he was powerful enough to elude my detection, and that would make him a dangerous wizard indeed. for the beach, there's some instant entertainment that's always right in reach. You can hike it, you can bike it, you can swing it on your back, and it's right there where you need it when you're ready to relax. Yes, it's instant entertainment. <laughs> any place, and any day. So no matter where you're going, <laughs> don't forget your book, okay? <laughs> Things aren't going your way. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be your day. I just can't win. Come on, little guy, it's time to shine. Come to showbiz pizza, leave it all behind. Knock him down, get him in. Yeah, you're gonna win. I win, I win, I win. Showbiz pizza. I feel like a new man. Every kid can be yeah. a kid. Oh, hey. Um... Hope you like the visionaries. Hope you're still liking visionaries. Uh, I still do. I still like this cartoon. Um, and it's funny just hearing, you know, Cobra Commander's voice come out of somebody that's not Cobra Commander and Duke and all them guys. His voice comes out of other people. Just, just a little weird. But you do the same thing when you watch Transformers. So all these guys worked. Almost all of the uh, the Hasbro related cartoons that were all done by Marvel Studios were almost all the same people. So, all right, here we go. This is one that I aired a long time ago, and I kind of stopped there because we didn't have the best quality copy. I've been finding better copies, so we're going back to it, and we're going to try to air it in order, unlike what I did before, where it got choppy. We're going back to Spiral Zone. Um, I like Spiral Zone. Uh, you know, very dark cartoon, man, for, for kids. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, literally, it's, you know, people are infested, you know, there's a plague and all that stuff. Weird. So, all right, here we go. This is Spiral Zone, episode one, which I'm not even sure I aired episode one, because I think my episode one was messed up. So this is episode one. This is holographic zone battle. Enjoy. Surrender or pay the consequences. Earth's most powerful soldiers are Earth's last chance to fight the spiral zone. Darkness has fallen on the victims. Of the zone. Our world calls for courage, peace and freedom. We must own 
Zone Riders. Looks like we're coming to a commercial. Let's fight the zone. Mr. Jennings? Well, Hero, what brings you here? Ah, uh, we have an hour before the briefing. Thought I'd get in a few games. Join me? No, I have no time for games. War games, Tank. War games? Kriegspiel? Nein. War is not a game. It must be taken seriously. Sorry, Lieutenant, I was unpacking some boxes. Ah, well, I wish to play some of the games, please. Actually, I just got something in that you can carry with you. You might find it more interesting. It's called Holographic Zone Battle. Oh, how does it work? It can be set for Defender or Zoner. It surrounds the planet with holographic battle. It really puts you in the action. Take it with you, try it out. Uh, let me know what you think. Amazing! Want to try it with me, Tank? Ah, nein. I learned my tactics the proper way, from military history. Kids. The briefing is in less than an hour. Punctuality is one of my virtues. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. I enjoy yourself, Lieutenant. Ah, let's see how exciting this is. I'll be the defender. Gee, excellent graphics.
The reason we've come to the Bay Area is the Marin County Generator. It's located here, on the old Sausalito historical site. As long as the zone put out from that generator cuts across the Golden Gate, nothing can sail, which means the loss of our shipping links to Hawaii and Japan. And that means the loss of the entire Pacific Basin. We can't allow this to happen. I have a feeling Overlord expects us to try to do something about it. You got that right, Tank. Tactical radar reported his aircraft landing in Marin. Overlord and his Black Widows will be waiting for us. So it'll be a hit-and-run operation. Tank and Max will provide cover while Katarina and I mine the generator. Hero, you'll be our operational reserve. Anyone gets in trouble, you get them out. I... Good. Now then, we go in at precisely 0600 hours tomorrow. Breakfast is at 4 and I'll expect you all in the armory at 515 sharp. Got it? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, until then, get some rest. You'll need it. Dismissed. Derek. Yes, Kat? There is an old Russian saying, we pay later with the worries we spend today. It's the commanding officer's job to worry. Your lives are my responsibility, and Overlord doesn't give second chances. Someday, this will all be over, Derek. Then, we'll have time for... Other things. Yeah? Gosh, I I'm sorry we missed our report in, sir. It won't happen again. Hey, anybody home? Uh-oh. Hero, are you in there? <laughs> Lieutenant, I just read an interesting new tactic. Ah! Not like Hero to leave things so messy. I think maybe... I should talk to the commander about all this game stuff. Bandit sure taking his time. Yeah. If Overlord had sent me, I would have been back by now. If you could find your way back. One more crack like that, and I'll personally pierce your ears for you real quick. Go ahead, Razorback. But think about what Overlord will do to you if you miss. I trust that your mission was successful. Very successful. In a short time, Commander Dirk Courage is going to get a nasty surprise. Good. Very good. Now, let's go greet our visitor. Got a letter from my cousin in Chicago. He saw Rambo 12 last week. The ticket cost him $30. Well, he shouldn't complain. At least they got movies. Yeah, what else did your cousin have to say? Well, he says they're thinking about getting Major League Baseball going again. Figure they can get at least six teams together. Yeah, it should be good for morale. You hear that? Hey, it's Taka, that Japanese lieutenant from the Zone Riders. He's coming on awful fast. He's not gonna stop. The Alger Fire is one of ours. Why the devil is he going into the Zone? Stay tuned. The Zone Riders will be back. And now we return with more Spiral Zone action. You sure it was Lieutenant Taka? Hmm. I see. All right, thank you. Commander. I think you should have a talk with Hero. I wish I could. He's gone into the Zone without his suit. What? This is Mr. Jennings. He runs the PX. Sir, I, I was hit with a stun ray. After I woke up, they said I was there working all the time. That's impossible. Unless it was someone disguised as you. This is post-19. 
set out to get Hero, and he succeeded. Welcome to my headquarters, Lieutenant. Yes, it's nice to have you in our camp. As a hostage, and as a source of information. Now then, Lieutenant, give us the details of Commander Courage's plan. I... I... Oh. Come on, Lieutenant. You really want to tell me? You're supposed to, you know. He's planning to attack the generator. I know that. I need you to tell me when. All done. Very good, Lieutenant. And now, tell me how. A frontal assault across the bridge thinks you won't expect that. That's all I know. Thanks to you, Lieutenant. We're going to have a surprise waiting for your former comrades. A very unpleasant surprise. Here are the detonators you requested. Uh, Commander? Yes, Dr. Lawrence? Yes, well, I, I've had a look at this little toy, most ingenious. A holographic projector connected to a video game grid with a suggestion generator. It not only entertains, it hypnotizes. Clever. Well, that's nothing extraordinary, actually. Nothing extraordinary? Well, however, I do think this is worth noting. The power source. You see, it's solar, therefore it won't operate within the zone. But <laughs> I fixed all that. With this battery power booster, instead of a 10-foot sphere, it will now cover 30 feet and operate anywhere. Oh, uh, yes, I, uh, well, the power boost burned out the hypnotic generator, but I didn't think you'd want that anyway. However, you might just find some use for it. Quite possible. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, Zone Riders, hit it! Uh, uh, return safely, fellow. Just turned north onto Tiburon Road, sir. Into your position. Hurry! Hand me the meter. Tank, go! Katarina, 
mine. Here, quick. Give them covering fire. I'll try to slip in. He pushes them. Five minutes. I'll do the other sides. Hero! Zone ah! riders, home in on my signal. Hero, get out of there! He won't do it! He's gone! So we'll stun him! No, it's too risky. The vibrations could set off the detonators. And they can't be deactivated! We have to take him without weapons. Hit it! Time's running out. We'll have to leave him. One more try. Distract him. I told you, boy. Acting! I'll finish planting detonator. We have less than two minutes. Let's get out of here. Rough ride, kid, but it's the only way. Get up, meet at the bridge. Roger! I don't think you're going anywhere, Courage. Much better. I owe you. <laughs> All of you. I can't wait to get out of here. I am so bored. <laughs> we thought you would be. Tank brought you a present. A game. Wow! Thank you, Tank. I thought you didn't like video games. <laughs> I don't. But this isn't a video game. Chess. A military game. Time you learned some tactics. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more Spiral Zone action. And now we return with more Spiral Zone adventure. Defend, fight the zone! 
drugs is like being on top of the world. Everyone says so. Everyone seems to be having one dandy old time. Hey, it's part of growing up. Or is it? Just think about this. Before you go and do something you've never done before, you just better know what you're jumping into. Mommy, why did I get a cavity? Why? Parents have to answer enough tough questions, so do all you can to prevent that one. Make sure you give your kids Crest. You see, Crest has Floristat. It's a unique formula, and no other toothpaste has ever done a test to prove it's better than Crest at fighting cavities. Crest, the dentist choice for their patients, should be your choice for your children. I hope I don't get a cavity next time. I gotta take a break. I wanna play in the rain and take a break. Setting up so cool and clear. Yeah, it feels as good as the rain is out here. I gotta take a break. I wanna play in the rain and take a break. It's a good coming down. Now you could win a year's worth of free travel on United Airlines. Plus $25,000. Look for the 7-Up Play All Day game. 7-Up! Sitting here reading an old issue of Marvel Age. Yes, that's when, when Star Wars was still in Marvel the first time. And, uh, man, I miss that stuff. Um, but here you go, man. This is back in the day. They have an ad so that you could send your submissions in to Marvel. Man, those days are long gone. And that was for writers, pencilers, inkers, letterers, and colorists. And uh, all submissions should be addressed to Jim Shooter, Editor-in-Chief at Marvel Comics at 387 Park Avenue South, New York, New York. That's crazy. Because I don't even know where Jim Shooter is anymore. So, alright. I hope you guys liken the Spiral Zone. And for those who have come back or you haven't seen them early episodes that I did of Saturday Morning Serials. I hope you like Spiral Zone. Um, they had some really cool ass toys, but super hard to find now. I think I had one when I was a kid and I don't think I got it when it came out. I, I don't, I think I got it at a garage sale or a flea market or something. Cause I thought it looked cool. So, I mean, man, it was cool. They were oversized. They had cloth, cl cloth costumes on. They had cool vehicles. Sweet stuff. So also I've said this before on the other show. Uh, I've been running movie trailers on the other show, and occasionally I'll put a movie trailer on over here, uh, but most of my stuff's commercials. Are, are you guys liking the commercials? Do you, do you like what I'm what I'm showing? Uh, I try to mix it up. I'm always looking for old commercials, and some stuff, you know, like I, I, I love finding the old Star Wars and like the Masters of the Universe, and I probably play those a lot, but I hope you guys like them, uh, because I do. I think I think those old Star Wars ones are great, so... All right, here we go. We're going back to the well with some kissy fur. Um, I still not used to. I, I, I've been rewatching this with you guys, and um, man, that, that new opening is is uh, weird. But man, when it went from second season with the change in animation and whatnot, I, I, I it's just weird. It's distracting to me. But I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, it's it's noticeable. So. But here you guys go. This is Kissy Fur. This is episode 15. And uh, this is the episodes Like Father, Like Son, and Forked Tongue Frog. So enjoy. <music>
Wow. Oh. Yeah, Dad? Don't forget to start early on your homework. <sighs> okay, Dad. Boy, sometimes I feel like I'm drowning in chores. Oh. Whoa! Going, clumsy fur. I always knew you were all wet. <laughs> Gizzy fur, we're gonna go practice swap ball. Yeah, Gizzy fur, you wanna join us? I can't, too. I still have lots of chores to do. Oh, too bad. Eh, who needs kissy wimp when you got me? Gizzy fur's the bestest player ever. That's why we're the undefeated swap ball champions. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Okay, Lenny. Just keep your eye on the ball. Ooh. Hey! 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 Slow down! Great dinner, Dad. Thanks, son. That's my job. Speaking of jobs, isn't it time for you to do one of yours? Oh, shucks. A cub's work is never done. Never, 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 never! Hey there. What's eating at you? Dad, I have too many chores. <laughs> Come on now. I always thought being a cub was kind of easy. I think being a grown-up is easy. You know, when I was a cub, I used to always wish I could swap places with my dad. But the funny thing is, now that I'm a grown-up, I'd give anything to swap places with you. <laughs> what a great idea! Dad, how about if we swap places? What? Oh, I, I, I didn't really mean... Oh, come on, Dad. It'd be fun. Just for one day. Well, uh, I, um... It would be what you always call a learning experience. Hmm. Well, maybe so. All right, you're on. Hooray! Okay, Dad, uh, I mean, son. You have a good day at school today. Thanks, son. Um, uh, I, I mean, Dad. <laughs> and you have a good day at work. Thanks, bye-bye. Oh, boy, I'm going to have an easy day being a cub. Boy, I'm going to have an easy day being a grown-up. Why, Gus, what on earth are you doing here today? Oh, uh, well, um, Kissyfer and I have traded places for today, Miss Emmy Lou. Poor little fella doesn't realize how simple this cub stuff is. Oh, really? B, honey, why don't you start today's morning exercises? Yes, Miss Emmy Lou. Okay, everybody, follow me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <sighs> oh, oh, maybe this isn't going to be as simple as I thought. This battle cap is tougher to battle than I thought. Ooh, faster, Kissy Fur, faster! I have an important emergency! Yes, Miss Bessie! One, two, three, four! One, two, three, four! One, two, three, four! And now we're done! Thank goodness! <sighs> there, we made it! Phew! Oh, wonderful! Now for my important emergency task! I uh, guess I am, ma'am. Oh, oh, can I solve it? <laughs> yes, Dwayne. The answer. 
answer is three billion six million two hundred thousand five hundred and fifty-four. Well, that's very good, Dwayne. Thank you. Somebody better sit over in the corner and read all those math books. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. Uh, I'm too poop to pedal. Gus! It's no. too stag. Oh, Gus! Kissy Bird, uh, where's Gus? I'm taking his place today. Gee, Gus promised to help me tear down a big tree today. <gasps> I just can't get it to fall. Well, I'll have to pull it down. Wow! You? Sure, just like my dad would. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Uh, I'll go get my ropes. Recess time! Yay! <laughs> hey! Hey, you wimps! <gasps> Uh-oh, it's the fox cubs from the Willow Lagoon. Oof! How'd you like to defend your Swamp Ball Championship against us? We'll play you foxes any day. But we can't play today. We don't have Kissy Fur. Yeah, he's our bestest player. Yeah? Well, what about him? Uh, me? me, me? Uh, now, hold on there. All right, you cubs, play ball! Yeah. We score! We score! Yeah. Yeah. Nice going! Like father, like son! Come on! Let's play ball! <gasps> you ready, Kissy Fur? Ready! I think. Go for it! <sighs> <sighs> Can't get any worse. Guess again, huh? furballs. Looky here, Floyd. <laughs> Dinner. Mm -mm. Things are definitely looking up today, Jolene. <laughs> <laughs> that, Jolene? One day you can be sitting around hungry as ever, and then a surprise just drops down from above. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Kissy me food! And my dad! <gasps> the alligators are gonna eat them! Not if I can help it. Ali. Oop. I do declare that it's time to reassess our strategizing. What's that mean, Jolene? It means... Thanks, Dad. But I think maybe we better switch jobs again. Doing your job is hard work. Yes, it is, but being a kid is pretty hard, too. Besides, you have a swamp ball game to win. And when you scored those last three goals and won the game, son, I was just as proud as can be. Thanks, Dad. 
Well, it's time for me to do my job. Want me to help you there, son? Nope. I just want you to rest. I bet you worked hard today. Oh, I sure did. You know, a cub's life is kind of, kind of tiring in a way. I mean, I mean, I mean. You know, Dad, I think we do a good job just being ourselves together. All right, class, it's time for me to read you a fairy tale. I just love fairy tales. Uh, fairy tales are for girls. Oh, here's a good one. It's called The Frog Prince. Oh, I love princes. Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, there was a little frog. But he was really a handsome prince turned into a frog by an evil wizard. And the only way he could turn back into a prince was if he was kissed by a beautiful princess. Kiss a frog? No way! Ew! Reet, teet, teet, and a body o' dough. Rat a tat, net, la da do. And so the little frog was able to live happily ever after. Mmm, I like the sound of that. For the frog had been kissed by the beautiful princess and turned back into a handsome prince. Oh, what a good story. Oh. That's all for today, children. Class dismissed. Oh, Prince, huh? Of course! Why didn't I... Ah, think of this before! It's the ultimate ticket to a life of luxury! Oh, poor me! Oh, poor me! Oh, poor me! You a princess? No. You know any princesses? Uh, no. <laughs> How horrible. If only I had some royal subject around to make me feel better. Well, what about me? You? Sure, I'll be your subject. Hmm, I don't know. Will you wait on me hand and foot? And cater to my every whim? Oh, I guess so. Great, that ought to kill some time till the princess shows up. Now, first of all, I need a royal castle. A castle? Wait, I know just the place! Tell him, kiddo. Oh, I get it. It's that fairy tale. Come on, bee honey, quit kidding around. This is no joke, Kizzy Fur. This is the prince's castle. But you're just making this prince stuff up, right? I resent that remark, peasant. It's a frog. He's a frog prince. His name's Prince Eugene. But he's no prince. He's just a dumb old frog. Can you prove that I'm not a prince? Well, uh, uh, I, uh... Can you prove that I'm dumb or even old? Gee, no, I, uh, I guess... Then I rest my case. His royal majesty has spoken. Ew, a frog. Yeah, in our treehouse. What are we going to do, Kissy Fur? I don't know, but I think Bee Honey's being taken for a ride by that dumb old frog. Make way for his royal highness! Gang way for his royal highness! Hey, Dad, are those peasants in my orchard? Uh, 
Prince of Apples! Hey! How can he prove he's a prince? Simple! If a princess kisses him, then he'll become a prince once again! Hey! If he's a prince, then how about if I crown him? My lady, tell the fat warthog that I can only be crowned by my royal advisor. Who are you calling fat, you little... Yow! Oh! Ow! Ah, these peasants begin to bore me. We must go now to the castle for my royal nap. Yes, my liege. And don't forget to come back for these apples. Kissy fur, we gotta do something. Yeah, and fast! Liz, it's not Beauty's fault. She just thinks that the frog is under a spell. A spell? Toot's right. A spell might be our answer. It might? Make way for the princess! Make way for the princess! Oh, this is so embarrassing. Don't worry, Dwayne. This ought to trick that phony frog into revealing himself. Yeah, when he won't kiss you, Bee Honey will know he's a fake. <laughs> Make way for the princess! What? A princess? Did you say princess? Uh-oh. Uh-huh, one kiss and you'll be a real prince again. Come on! Um, uh, maybe we better go back to the castle and uh, think about this. Bee Honey, this princess just happened to be passing through Paddle Cap County. This is amazing! Are you a real princess? Yes, and Kissy Fur here tells me that this frog needs a... <laughs> I mean, a kiss. Come here, you icky little froggy poo. Don't be shy. Your Highness, what's wrong? Don't be shy! It was fun while it lasted. Listen, <laughs> that's Eugene. Look here, Floyd, a nice green appetizer. <laughs> oh, and that's an alligator. And that means trouble. Let's go. Oh, can't we talk this over? Uh oh, that frog's a dead duck. Not if I can help it. Bee Honey, hurry back to the clubhouse and get your mirror. Okay, Kissy Fur. And two, go get your finger paints. <laughs> gotcha! Hold it! <laughs> Forget the froggy appetizer. The main course has just arrived. Mmm, <laughs> cup casserole. I wouldn't eat this frog if I were you. Oh, yeah? Why not? Uh, because he's a fairy tale frog. That's right. He's got magical fairy tale powers. One spell from him, and he can even give you the dreaded swamp gas fever. He can? Prove it. Go on, Eugene. Show him your magical powers. My what? Oh, yeah, yeah, my magical powers. Pure is my heart, but weak are my knees. Give these two pesky gators some kind of disease. Poof! <laughs> wow. 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 What's wrong? What is it? Your faces, they're all covered with orange spots. <gasps> Give me that, Jolene. Huh? <gasps> Get mad again and turn you into newts! <laughs> <No! laughs> Pretty clever, Fuzzball. How'd you do that? Well, I know a trick or two myself. See? 
I just painted this mirror. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, bee honey. I'm sorry, Kissifer was right. I'm not really a frog prince, just a princely frog. Oh, well, maybe this was all my fault for being so easily fooled. If I really was a frog prince, your kiss would break the spell, princess. Aww, <laughs> I'm not going to fall for anybody's smooth talk ever again. Good idea if ever there was one. Goodbye, Eugene. Be careful. Don't worry. I'm one reformed frog. I learned my lesson. I'm through with the con games. Hey. <laughs> what? Howdy, friend. You look ill. What? I do? Sure. Looks like swamp gas fever to me. Look in this here mirror. Hey, what are those spots there? Don't worry. You just need Dr. Eugene's handy dandy medicine. Uh-oh. Here he goes again. I'm willing to let some of this stuff go cheap. How many dozen you want to order? I can give you a discount. By the way. shot. Beat the clock. 90 second timer. Seven arcade action sounds. Automatic scoring. Tie score. Two seconds left. 90 second shootout from Melapel. All right. I hope you're liking Kissy first still. You know, it's funny because I've talked to people about this. You know, I read the little articles and stuff about these old shows, and some of these people are still like, oh, you know, it's a garbage cartoon. I don't know how it lasted that long. But it did last two full seasons. Two full seasons. And people still like it. I mean, really, I got people who tell me all the time that they still like Kissy Fur. Um, or people who've never seen it. Who are like, my kids are loving this cartoon. Good. That's this. That's my. That's what I like. If you're watching this with your kids and stuff like that, hey, great. I mean, I know this is a flashback for some of you guys. Uh, I've talked to people older than me. I've talked to people younger than me. I've talked to people from all over. And uh, shout out to everybody. I mean, I've gotten talk. People talk to me from Canada, Norway, which is crazy. If you're in Norway and you're seeing this now, hello. Thank you for watching. Holy crap. That's awesome. Uh, and it, you're watching cartoons that you've never seen and maybe your kids have never seen. Th that's what I want to do. I want to bring to you guys as much cartoons that you haven't seen. And I guess Kissy Fur is one of them for some of you guys. So, All right. We're going to keep it with the uh, cutesy animals. And we're doing another episode of Pound Puppies. That's right. Pound Puppies. I've talked to more than a couple people with the pound puppies who've won them as kids and they still have their ones that they won. Uh, I don't know what contest that is. Um, I never, I never had a chance to win a pound puppy. I never owned a pound puppy in my life ever. I don't know if my kids had, um, maybe some of the newer ones, but I never had a pound puppy ever. So... Wasn't wasn't my thing. Uh, I did watch the cartoon, um, so there's that. So here you guys go. We're going back. It's Pound Puppies. This is episode four. 
Gotta get ready for this one. It's Snowbound Pound. Snowbound. Holy, excuse me. Snowbound Pound. Pound Puppies does not like making their episodes easy to say out loud. So, there you guys go. Enjoy, and I'll see you in a few. It's the Pound Puppies! Here's Cooler, Whopper, Nose Marie, Bright Eyes, and Owler. Ablaze. My blood is boiling and my lips are on fire. Hey, who's yourself down, Nose Marie? This is a cartoon show. Oh, well then, pardon my little old peaches. Is the furnace almost fixed, Mr. Nabbit? Oh, I'm doing my best here, Miss Holly. Just keep your shirt on. I'll keep my coat on, too. It's freezing. Face it, we're all going to turn into popsicles. Oh, come on, Howler. Look at the bright side. It's a wonderful winterland out there. Ah, with our old friend Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Looks like Jack Frost swallowed you whole, honey. Jack Frost is a close personal friend of mine. <laughs> Mr. Nabbit, what happened? Oh, nothing, Miss Holly. I'll have this furnace fixed in no time there. Yeah, no time in the near future. Now, stay cool, uh, so to speak. <laughs> Ooh, good old Dab Nabbit will fix that flaky furnace. For good. Uh-oh, it's the Pound Puppy Alert. Hmm, looks like a dog in trouble. Looks more like a wild animal to me. Yeah, I bet it's a wolf. I mean, a hungry wolf with sharp teeth. In fact, it's the big bad wolf. Yeah, yeah, and it's coming here to eat us. Cooler, what'll we do? He'll huff and he'll puff and he'll uh, he'll blow our pound down. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins, Holla. That's no wolf. It's just a poor poachy being thoroughly chewed on by little old Jack Frost. How about these? Let's start.
Oh, the poor thing. I wonder what's wrong with her. There's no need to fear. Young Dr. Whopper is here. Once again, it's time for Young Dr. Whopper. Well, Doc, what's the diagnosis? I can tell by gungulating the thrombulator that she has an acute case of Framarim and Jim Jam. Golly! What does that mean, Dr. Whopper? It means she's sick. That'll be $450, please. Oh, where, where am I? You're with friends, honey lamb. Now, what in heavens is ailing you? I'm expecting a delivery of puppies any time now. They'll never get through in this storm. No, Howler, honey. What she means is she's got a bun in the oven. In fact, she's got a whole baker's dozen in there. She's gonna give birth to puppies. I better call the veterinarian. Now you just lay back and relax, sugar. Everything's gonna be just fine. Oh, no, the phone's dead. The lines must be down. Now we'll never get through to Doc Weston. And this poor pup needs help, Cooler. What'll we do? Well, the way I see it, Pound Puppies, we have three choices. One, we could just sit around and wait till the furnace gets fixed. George, Mudge, you confounded boiler. I'll show you. Which could be quite a while. Or two, we could do the rumba! Or three, we could trudge through miles and miles of sleet, ice and snow, face the horrors of nature and imperil our very lives in our probably futile quest to bring back Doc Weston. Well, crew, what'll it be? It's rumba time! This is no time for dancing, pound puppies. We've got work to do. Holly's right. So I'm gonna brave the blizzard to bring back Doc Weston. It's the only thing to do. Besides, I'm a lousy dancer. <laughs> oh, Kula, honey, don't go alone. You need someone there to help you brave the wintry perils, to keep you from freezing off your cute little doggy toes. Here, take Howler. Yeah, uh, who, me? Thanks for volunteering, Howler. And if it's daring do you want daring done, I'll volunteer. Howler, check the supplies. Let's see. Uh, caviar, pizza, sweet and sour shrimp, linguine in clam sauce, lobster, Newburg, cheeseburgers, and truffles flambe. Well, that's it. Howler, what are you thinking? Oops, uh, I almost forgot. Raw hard doggy chews. <laughs> Yummy! Okay, pound puppies, let's start pounding! I'd rather be doing the rumba. A lesson alive. A farewell, oh noble and courageous canines. <laughs> oh, give my regards to Jack Frost. Bright eyes, honey. I do believe your bulb needs changing. According to my calculations, we should be somewhere near the downtown shopping mall. Yeah, unless they're having a sale on tuxedos, I think we're lost. What, what, what was that? Lucy says it was the abominable snowman. Whopper, that's ridiculous. There's no such thing as an ab 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 abominable snowman. Oh, yeah? Well, then what's that? Lucy says we should go home now, okay? It's him, the abominable snowman. Yeah, and he's got out-of-state license plates. Run for your life. Children and Moosey's first. I'm running, but I'm not getting anywhere. Oh, 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 my, oh, oh, no, he's got, I mean, he's alive. Oh, oh. Where's Howler? Oh, no. Uh, I don't like to jump to conclusions, but I'm afraid these rawhide doggy chews are all that's left of Howler. You mean? Yes, Whopper. We'll have to carry on the mission without him. <laughs> well, it looks like the blizzard is finally over. <laughs> I guess we can go skiing down Main Street now. <laughs> <laughs> I hate happy news. But the storm has happened.
had its sad stories as well. Shanna, a priceless Sharpe dog, has been lost in the storm. That's the mutt I kicked out in the snow! We spoke with her owners, Mr. and Mrs. Simon, this afternoon. Shanna is expecting puppies any moment. We're offering a $5,000 reward for her safe return. $5,000? That dog is worth a small fortune and I let it get away. It didn't get far, Mommy Dearest. Holly took that icky dog into the pound. We saw her, didn't we, Catgut? Oh, she did, did she? Well, isn't that sweet? You know, Bratina, maybe we should adopt a dog. Ew! A smelly, icky doggy? No way! But what if it were a very valuable, smelly, icky doggy? <laughs> Dagnab, fine as they. This means war, and I have not yet begun to fight. And he's not yet begun to fix the furnace. Gosh, oh golly gee, I sure hope Shauna feels better soon. Is there anything I can do, Nose Marie? Until Kula brings back the vet, all we can do is lift her spirits. One spirit lifter special coming up. You're so peachy king with a cherry on top like something we should eat. We want to lift her spirits, honey, not scare them out of town. Hello? Holly, dear, could you please come over to the house right away? I have exciting news. What is it, Auntie Katrina? I want to adopt a puppy. Hey, the monster spit me out. I'm free. Free! Free at last! <laughs> oh, but I'm alone. All alone in these spooky woods. I'll starve. I'll freeze. I'll, I'll, I'll miss my next rumble lesson. Then again, maybe not. Maybe some kind woodland creatures will take me in and offer me food and shelter. Oh. Or maybe they'll chew me to bits. Lucy's taking us to Doc Weston's. One of these days, I gotta get a driver's license. Bye, Lucy, away! Sweet, adorable Holly. So glad you could drop by. What's with the new decor? Oh, can't you tell, my sweet little ginger snap? I've turned over a new leaf. I love dogs now, simply love the little furry beasts. Mm. <laughs> Puppies are my life. Isn't that right, Bratina? Oh, yeah. We all really love dogs now. <laughs> So, we've decided to adopt one of your charming pound puppies. Are you feeling okay, Auntie Katrina? Absolutely. And we know just the puppy we want. That sweet, gentle creature you rescued from the blizzard. You must mean Shauna. Katrina's cooking up something. And I can smell it burning. But Shauna can't be adopted right now, Auntie Katrina. You see, she's gonna have puppies. Puppies, puppies, oh, how divine. Well, then, we'll adopt Shauna and her puppies. But... No buts, Carly. Um, uh, oh, I mean, don't be silly, sweetheart. Just go down and get the dog ready. I'll be right over. Now run along. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we'll return Shanna to her owners and collect the reward money. <laughs> reward money? So that's it. We're gonna be rich. We're gonna be rich. Filthy rich. Because we'll keep her newborn puppies and sell them on the black market for a fortune. <laughs> oh, no. She's gonna take the puppies away from their mother. Katrina a severe bite on her bombosity. We so 
saw the whole thing on the monitor, Holly. So that's her evil plan. I knew Auntie Katrina was up to no good. <gasps> She's here. Holly, dear. I've come for the doggy walkie. We have to hide Shauna. She'll never find us in the underground pubway. Like Jack Frost's Winter Palace. We can't keep Shauna down here. She'll freeze. If Cooler were here, he'd know what to do. But he has a bigger job to do, Bright Eyes. He's out there braving the elements to reach Dark Western, trudging over frozen wastelands, crossing treacherous icy rivers, risking a wintry demise with no care about his own comfort and well-being. Actually, we decided to take a cab. Yeah, it's cold out there. I've got to catch up with Cooler and Whopper. I'm not scared of this creepy forest. And you know why? Because I know all the spooky stuff is all in my imagination. <laughs> For instance, this isn't a scary monster. It's just a, a creepy old tree. <laughs> and this isn't a wolf. It's just a bump on a log with big fangs and... <clears throat> My, you look delicious. Oh, a wolf. A whole pack of wolves. And we haven't eaten in weeks. You don't want to eat me. I'm all skin and bones. We're not picky. We're just hungry. <laughs> but there's got to be something better to eat around here than me. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, like, uh, uh, like... Some nice, tasty rocks. Yeah. Then how about some, uh, delicious tree bark? Patooey. Or some refreshing, frosty slush? Yeah. Patooey. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Can't you see I'm busy trying to find food for these guys? What, what does the food in my hat have to do with it? Eureka! It's chow time! Come on, get it! <laughs> My compliments to the chef. We made it! Doc Weston's office! Thanks, Mac. Keep the change. I hate getting paid with rawhide doggy chews. <laughs> What are you doing here? There's a sick dog at the puppy pound. Then we'd better get over there right away. We'll take my car. We are poundwood bound. Holly, let me in this instant. I want that dog now. Confound that blasted fainus. I hear you trying to hide that dog. Well, you're not going to get away with it. All right, Holly. Where is she? Aha! Uh -huh. So that's where you're hiding. Her. No, 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 Miss Stone Art, ma'am. You don't understand. I understand perfectly. Out of my way. That dog is mine. <laughs> Well, what do you know? That furnace is finally giving off some steam there. Where did she take that dog? The coast is clear. But, Holly, honey, if your Auntie Katrina finds us hiding out in her very own house, she'll make us into doggy stew. We can't worry about Auntie Katrina. Shauna and her puppies are what's important. Come on! We could put Sean in here. Land sakes, this is Katrina's very own boudoir. Oh, it gives me the willies. Mommy Dearest, is that you? Oh no, it's Brad Tina. Mommy Dearest, I thought I heard a crash. Huh? Oh, hello, Bratina. What's going on in here? Um, uh, I'm afraid Auntie Katrina isn't feeling very well. Mummy, dearest, you don't look very well either. Not only 
say that, you could use a shave. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be fine, Bratina. She just needs her, um, uh, beauty rest. Nighty-night. Ew, I hope I don't look like Mummy Dearest when I grow up. I don't know how we'll make it through all this snow. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. Looks like we're stuck. How will we ever be able to save Shauna now? I don't know, Whopper. It'll take a miracle. Oh. And that sounds like one miracle coming up. It's Howler! Hiya, guys. Long time no see. <laughs> Howler, you're a sight for sore eyes. Yeah, we thought you were a gunner. Oh, me? Nah, I just had some last-minute dinner plans. Thanks for the ride into town, guys. Anytime, Howler. Next week, let's do lunch, okay? Ciao for now, baby. Hey, don't go racing off quite yet, guys. Hey, we got a little car trouble here, and I think I know how to solve it. Oh, I'm going to have the puppies any minute. Just hang on, Shauna. What do we do? I don't know nothing about birth and no babies. Oh. <gasps> Sakes alive, it's cooler, and he's brought Doc Weston. Now everything's going to be just fine. A boy or a girl? It's a boy and a girl. And a boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mother and children are doing just fine. Congratulations, pound puppies. Raw high doggy shoes for everybody. Hooray! Oh, now, let's see. According to the manual here, the pipe goes into lug nut D. I'll fix your lug nuts if you don't get me out of here. I'm going to follow the instructions, Miss Stoneheart. Bratina! Get me a can opener! Holly, thanks so much for taking such good care of Shauna <laughs> and all her puppies. And thank you, Mr. Simon. This reward money will keep a lot of puppies warm and cozy this winter. What Holly means by that is that she wants to use the money to fix the furnace. But we have a better plan for keeping warm this winter. We think she should spend the money to take us on a little old sunshine vacation. To Brazil! It's rumba time! Oh. It's the Pound Puppy Pet Care Corner. Our streets are busy place. There are cars and trucks and a pup could get hurt. Oh! oh. Howler, look out! That was close. Thanks, Holly. No problem. Be sure to use a leash when you take your dog for a walk. Yeah, it might keep... Don't pound check it out. That's gonna show you what work's about. Listen up, children, if you want to know what tomorrow will bring and where you will go. Gotta find your dreams and goals. Time to pick your schemes and roll. Make a choice, Jack. Can't lie on your back all day. No way, no way, no way. Make a choice, Jill. Can't lie on the hill all day. No way, no way, no way. You both can make choices about a career in any old field without any fear. You can be what you want. It becomes very clear when you believe in yourself and take time to prepare. Let's think about a career. We can both be an engineer or learn about the atmosphere. Oh, here's the road, Zach. They've got the knack. It's clear. They're on the right track to a career. There's one way to tell how powerful a rig is. They call it a pull contest. You and now, there's a test of strength for Stomper 4x4s. The Stomper official competition pull set. Battery not included. A Stomper 4x4 and a match set of counterbalance, ramp, and weight box. Hitch up the truck and turn its motor on. 
you can put that four-wheel drive to the test and discover just how much power you're playing with. The Stomper official competition pull set comes with everything you see here. From shop. Hey, that's right, kids. You can sell Grit Magazine. Grit Magazine. Found out about a month ago that Grit Magazine still exists. It's like a country magazine. It's like a, a like, like grit. Like you got to get down and dirty and get grit. You know, dirt. Weird. I did not know that was still a thing. And I also never seen the first issue ever of Grit Magazine in my life. I had to look it up online to see if I could find any of that. So, all right. I hope you like that Pound Puppies episode. Uh, I always love the fact that they got, they got to get the little PSAs on how to take care of your animals. Uh, like always walk with your dog on a leash. If you don't walk with a dog on a leash, you're probably going to get a ticket. So there's that too. They need to put that on them cartoon, on them little trailers. You know, oh, your dog will get hit. Yeah, your dog might get hit, but you also might get a ticket. And if you're a little kid, your parents will have to pay that ticket. So, and their parents are not going to be happy that they had to pay that ticket. <laughs> so, we're still talking about what's your favorite food, snack, or beverage from back in the day that doesn't exist anymore. Um... Man, I'll tell you what, fruit roll-ups used to have the fruit bars, and I used to love them things. They were roughly the same length as a fruit roll-up. Man, they're about like that thick. I mean, you take a, you know, you can smash a fruit roll-up and make it into a bar, but there's something about the consistency of those fruit bars. Man, those were awesome. Now they kind of make them. Um, I still find them, but they're more, they're called fruit leather. But man, something about the 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 uh, fruit fruit roll up ones, you know. Man, I love them things. They don't have those anymore. At least fruit roll ups doesn't make them anymore. So, I guess I guess if you're in a market that still that then they still do make them fruit roll ups, uh, and you want to send me some, uh, send them to one twenty four North Sunset Drive. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I guess I guess I mean, I have found stuff out of market. So, you know, but though, I love them things. Love them. All right, here we go. I'm going back to the sci-fi action. Uh, I've been doing the trilogy, and I'm not doing the trilogy this week. So, we're just doing Galaxy Rangers. Um, you know, I, I like Galaxy Rangers. Can't say much more about it when I've talked about it for a while now. Uh, but this is Galaxy Rangers episode 11, Mind Net. Enjoy. In 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth, seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies. Courageous pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. Shot airspace, Ranger Gooseman. Roger control. Longshot is a research facility, not a maximum security installation. I'm as worried about my net as you are, Chief, but until the Board of World Leaders makes up its mind, we continue testing. My net's potential is too dangerous. Security Chief De Silva here. Chief? Galaxy Ranger Gooseman has just arrived. He says the Board of Leaders gave him orders to take charge of MindNet. Welcome to Longshot, Ranger Gooseman. Look, I'm in a hurry. I'm taking this MindNet thing for safekeeping. 
Surely Walsh would have informed me. Where's your identification? ID get serious. Even in the Rangers, there's nobody else who can do this. Hold it. That's an electroshock field. <laughs> It's producing a biodefense. Seen enough? We worked on the Series 5 implant, but we ought to get confirmation just the same. Use the Camo terminal in the mine net lab. Let's go. As you know, our labs work on very long range research. We have a couple of your friends helping our aqua environment study. What's wrong, Winter? Goose ignored us! I thought Ranger Gooseman was their friend. Icarus and Winter don't think so. I'll call security. We never expected such incredible results from MindNet. Chief, security, line one. Forget it, Chief. Security alert! Alert in the MindNet lab! <coughs> Enjoy the nap, sucker. Not only do I get my net, when they come looking for the thief... They're gonna come right to you, Gooseman. Soon everybody will know the best of the Super Troopers ain't you. It's me, Riker Kilbane! <laughs> Waldo, you're just being stuffy. Zero Gravity Gymnastics is good exercise and good training, too. I appreciate your concern, Nico, but Zero-G just isn't natural. Oh, yeah? How come there's so much of it? Watch, Waldo. It's easy. See, Waldo? I promise we won't let you get hurt. But it's all so... so undignified. Come on, loosen up, Gizmo. No! Oof! Unhand me! Nico, shall we dance? It's a date. <laughs> ah. Nico, what's wrong? Hey, we need some help in here! Doc, give me a boost. Coming up. Nico, what's wrong? Something terrible has happened. Charge ignition. Something activated her implant. This is Senator Weiner. There has been a robbery at Longshot. The thief was identified as you, Ranger Gooseman. Fox, your rangers are to report for a court of inquiry, and you're to bring Gooseman along under arrest. Listen, mister, I'm a Galaxy Ranger and I took an oath. We'll report at once, but you're making a big mistake. Zachary, thanks for backing me. The day we don't trust one another is the day the Galaxy Rangers are finished. I was just getting used to one of you. It wasn't me. We are dealing with a very dangerous enemy. We must find out who it is. Goose is no traitor, Commander Walsh. Just where are the other super troopers who survived, Goose? I wish I knew. Look, what's this gizmo they say I swiped? MindNet is a means of artificially induced telepathy. At high settings, it could allow control of intelligent life. Intelligent? How fortunate that Senator Weiner is safe. We were lucky. The thief got only half of the device. 
The other half is here in Bader's isolation chamber. Can the thief get my net to function? I don't know. The stolen part has powers we don't fully understand. It does work. I felt it activate my charge. Uh, the board is still sensitive about the surviving super troopers. They want Goose jailed. Sir, give us a shot at recovering MindNet. I've got 24 hours to turn Goose in. That's all the chance you'll have. Killbane, you bungler! I must have MindNet. All of it! Your Majesty, this half will boost your powers. You told me you were the most powerful of the Super Troopers. But you're inferior! You could only imitate Gooseman's powers for a few seconds. You're wrong! Gooseman's powers need his implant! I summon mine at will! To attack! I'm Gooseman superior in every way. Prove it, then! You'll not only get the rest of my net, I'll give you the Galaxy Rangers as well! If you fail me again, you'll end up inside a Psycho Crystal! Or worse! Please. Nico, you'll be pushing your powers to the limits with this computer link-up. If you're sure you're up to it, let's begin. Doc we'll do whatever it takes to clear Goose. Pathfinder? Need you, little buddy. Captain Fox, someone is coming. Hurry, Doc. Okay, Nico, it's all yours. Nico, make contact with the remaining MindNet component. Doc, link up with the computer system. All set, Zachary. All right, everyone. Let's do it. Goose, picture the other super troopers in your mind. Doc, start running the correlation. Him, that's the one. Got it. Kill Bane. I should have figured. We did it. Zachary, we can't let them stop us. All right, man. You know your orders. We don't want to hurt you now. Oh! Oh, oh my! Hey, let's not lose our sense of humor. Getting stun gun should give you a laugh. Shouldn't we get a second opinion? Where are your men? Have you two met? Pardon me. You don't know me well enough to stun. You'll never get away with this. We'll take the component with us. I think I can trace the thought image. Let's go, team. Wait for me, Rangers. Zach, what in tarnation are you up to? I'm under orders not to let you leave Earth. Turn that transport around right now. No can do, Nat. Order. I'm ducking into the commercial trap. Sir! Sir, we've lost them! What? They're right out there! Somewhere! Ready to jump, Nico. Where to? Sorry, Eddie. I'm <laughs> Sorry, Ed. Out of the blast furnace, <laughs> and into the converter. Easy, Triton. Let's go, boy. Kilbane is very near. I'm getting a strong impression of the mind net device. Shouldn't Zozo and I be disguised too? 
You two and Buzz are staying with the ship and the mind net component. It's our fight, too. We're counting on you to do your job. Oh, all right. But be careful. Yuck, humans. Beat it, anchovy brain. Let's go. Guess I told you. This way. There. Jumps. Yes! It was so easy to plant images in your mind, my little Nico, and draw you here with this. Runt, you're still a loser, old buddy. Still the man you never beat, old buddy. Enough! Where's the rest of my net? You don't really expect us to hand you the galaxy on a silver platter, do you? If you don't, I'll burn the very minds from you all. I have the power of mind net. I can fight this. Nico, it's too strong. Goose, Doc, help her. Killbane, how about you and me, one on one, like the old days, and the winner gets both halves of mind net. Goose, no! How dare you resist? Still scared of me, Killbane? You runt! I'll squash you like a cockroach! I say no! Either way you have them, I say we fight! Finally, you'll prove yourself! Super Trooper against Super Trooper. Interesting. Just remember what I said about failing, Kilbane. <laughs> there are weapons! If you can reach them. Some are nearly empty. Some are almost full. Prepare. Where are the other Super Troopers? Gravestone, Darkstar, and the rest. Don't worry about them. They're gonna live a lot longer than you. Yeah. Let the games begin. You were always the weak one. You were never good enough. To be a super trooper. Who save your charge? Don't use it up. You can't win, Runt. You're inferior. So how come you're the one who's backing away? We'll see about that. Goose. 
save your charge. Out of tricks? What about this? You're finished! Stand still! Fighting you is like standing still. Go, Goose! Put him away! You were always a loser! Yeah? Then how do you explain this? Yeah, all right! Doesn't have to end this way. We can help you. And be like you? A slave? This has gone far enough. I will have my neck. We made a bargain. Not with me. If we can go free. What? Zachary, trust me. Well, of course, my pretty. Of course. All right. Mine met yours. How very sensible. At last, supreme power! You'd better start with a low setting. Don't tell me how to handle it! Glorious! Sublime! Quick, gather round! I've got to shield us! Ah, you witch! Stay out of my mind! So, your intentions become clear! Double-crossing brute! How dare you! So that's your plan. Stay away from me. The powers of the man. My, 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 my. Give it back to me. The mind net machine opened their minds to one another. Let's go, Rangers. Coming after us, and I'll be waiting for you. Leaving so soon, my dear? Yeah. You're becoming tough. Thanks, Buzz Wang. Kilbane, when you see the others, warn them. I'm not a super trooper anymore, and I'll never again be a super trooper. You're not human! You're not a super trooper! Just what are you, Gooseman? I'm a Galaxy Ranger. Make sure you don't forget that. <sighs> Sorry I damaged mine, that Dr. Kruger. Maybe it's not such a bad thing, Buzz Wang. We won't experiment again until we've built in safeguards. At least the board finally had to recognize Shane Gooseman's innocence. We were hoping you rangers could help us here at Longshot. Some of the things we develop require rather unusual people to test them. Well, people just don't come any more unusual than the Galaxy Rangers, Doctor. Insider's privileges at the Miracle Factory. Q-Ball's gonna love this. Ha! You don't like the idea, Doc? Maybe if Longshot gives some attention to important things. Like what, Doc? How about some stunt clones? I could save the universe while I'm sound asleep. <laughs> no, I'm serious. And while I'm on the subject, video for robots. A droid also has feelings. Doc, you are so human. I'm shot. Stomper SSE Super Cycles. Cycles with the speed you power with a quick pull of the ripcord. You can race them with a friend. Or you can set up your own action stunt course, indoors or out. The Stomper SSE Super Cycles are cycles with speed. Stomper SSE Super Cycles, available in six models, each sold separately from Shopper. 
Strawberry shortcake and it's your sweet. Their pretend kisses make kissing a treat. Each sold separately. Baby strawberry shortcake, give your mommy a kiss. I love you, baby orange blossom. When you squeeze their tummies, they blow sweet scented make believe kisses. Delicious baby angel cake. <laughs> Time to get ready for your nap. Don't you just love them to pieces? <laughs> Baby strawberry shortcake and baby orange blossom and baby angel cake each sold separately. From yeah, you know, I love looking at old comics, especially when you can order like a, a, a subscription, and uh, you know you can get an entire year's worth of a book for less than what I pay for one book now, and I don't pay full price for a book because I have a store, so I get them at, at wholesale. So yeah, man, I will tell you what. Wouldn't it be nice that there were 12 cent books still? Mm -hmm. See, th this is what kind of throws me. We still get free comic book days, and they cost the stores usually a quarter apiece. They tell me you can't print books for a quarter apiece if you print books for a quarter apiece. Just, just put that out there. I don't know. All right. Hope you guys are still liking Galaxy Rangers. I am. I'm having fun with it. Um, so... Here we go. We're going back to something I haven't aired for a while. Well, I aired one a while back, but we're doing Qbert because people are still asking for it. So I'm going to bring you some more Qbert. So this is Qbert. Take me out to the Q game and Hook, Line, and Mermaid. Uh, they love putting Q in stuff in Qbert. And uh, I, like I said, I will never ever be able to wrap my head around how the Qbert arcade game spawned the Qbert television cartoon uh, because that's weird how you got a mythos from what you saw in that video game to what you got on your television uh, that's weird so here you guys go this is some Qbert uh, enjoy <laughs> Remove hangnails like Helga Rowdy. Get ready for my three on one pitch. <laughs> you, you call that ball playing? I gotta be nice to him, cause his dad's my dad's boss. I've seen babies throw and catch better than you guys. I guess that's why me and my dad are playing in the father and son game, and you're not. Says who? We're playing, and so are our pops. Well, shouldn't we ask our dads first? I'll bet my disc against yours that my team wins. My disc? You gotta bet. You guys don't have a chance. Not with my great hitting. And besides, if your team wins, my pop will fire your dad. <laughs> Bye, Nerdo. Humor. Uh oh, it's the principal. I'll see you in my office tomorrow. Whoa! Like this is Drag City to the max. What are you gonna do? I'll have to work two months in the school cafeteria to pay for that window. It'll be good job experience. Now let's talk our dads into playing. So, were you playing the game, Dad? I'm too tired to watch the game, let alone play in it. You'll be missing a good opportunity to dazzle your boss with your athletic skills, Mr. Q. Hmm, I could impress Cuba. Might even get a raise. All right, I'll play. Maybe I'm in better shape than I thought. I should tell him he might get fired. Cuba isn't gonna fire your dad. And besides, you don't want Cuba to win your disc. Then again, 
Maybe I'm not in such good shape. Don't worry, Dad. A little exercise will fix that. You're doing great, Dad. Yeah, Mr. Q. Now try jumping for the ceiling. Okay, this is easy. Dad, you okay? I said jump for the ceiling, not through it. Maybe we should try something else. This exercise will strengthen your throwing arm. Looks easy. Hey, Dad, doesn't that funny-looking guy work for you? Yeah, let's see what he's up to. What are you doing here? Getting ready for the father-son baseball game. Well, I've won the first place trophy the last five years, and I expect to win this time. You know how I hate losing. Remember, if my pop doesn't win, he'll fire your dad. Oh, I'll help you. We can't win the game now, or my dad will lose his job. Come on, we better go to the malt shop and tell the guys we gotta lose. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, eat up, guys. <laughs> it's my treat. I just had lunch, but I got room for a little more. Why all the free grub? Yeah, what's up? Well, it's like this. My pop will be fired if our team wins, so we gotta lose the game. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, like Mondo Bummer. Well, guys, what do you say? Let's lose. Get him! Get him! Yeah, get don't him. let him don't escape! Let him escape. Huh, can't we talk this over? Guess not. I'll get him down this street. Well, can't you? Yeah! Come back here! You're gonna get it! Like, I'm too upset! You guys are acting like total airheads! Yeah! Hubert's your friend and you won't help him out of a jam! Sorry, Hubert. We'll help ya. Yeah, yeah! We'll help you! Sure! Yeah, we will we'll help, help you! Help. Huh. Thanks, guys. Now help me get my nose out and let's go lose the game! It's the bottom of the first with no score. Cubert's coming to bat for the Cubert Sluggers. Get ready to strike out, Cubert. Remember what I said. I'll pop out for Dad's sake. Next up for the Bombers is Q-Boss. 
Okay, cue ball. You know what to do. Cue boss can't miss with this bat. And the bombers are out in front, 15 to nothing. Get ready to lose the game and your disc. <laughs> I wish we didn't have to throw this game. What do you mean, son? Well, uh, if we win, Q-Boss is going to fire you. <laughs> the team's doing this for me? I can't let everybody down. I don't care if I lose my job. We're going to win this game. You sure, Dad? Hey, guys, did you hear that? <laughs> we can play to win now. The Slugger's bats are coming alive. The score is now 15 to 7. said? Of course not. Unlike my son, I'm a good sport. Here, your team deserves this. But, Dad, I was only trying to... Quiet! You're grounded for two months. Here's my disc. No, you keep it. Huh? Gee, thanks! That was a nice thing you did, Cubert. I guess I'd just take after my pop. It's neat of Cube Captain to let us take this cruise to Q Mexico. Yeah, this is gonna be our best geography field trip ever. Cubert's right, class. So be on your best behavior. Why me? Come on, guys. Let's get aboard. Oh, well, late. But we're just in time for all the fun. Hey, watch where you're going, Q-Boo. Yeah. Like, are you okay or what? Yeah, except for my nose. I'll fix that. Something tells me that Creek Coily's gonna spoil our cruise. Ah, it's great to be fishing on the high seas. Yeah, this is the life. I don't believe it. I 
caught a, a mermaid. <laughs> oh, cray. Yeah, we won't hurt you. Wow, what a totally tubular tail. Did you get it, the mall? Mom? I don't understand. Uh, don't mind Q Val. What's your name? I'm Q -Mate. I got caught in your fishing line and pulled far from my home. Like total bummer. No problem. The ship will be passing over your home on the return trip. You can go back then. Yeah, you can stay with us till then. But no one must find out I'm a mermaid. Don't worry, you're safe with us. And remember, guys, don't let Coily find out about q -Mate. So, q -Nerd caught himself a mermaid. But you went to go zoo and pay me a fortune to get their hands on her. No one will ever recognize you in this totally awesome disguise. Like, yes, I'm Max to the stoop. Spoon me with a gag. Great, just what we need. Two valley girls. Look! That noser has a tail. It's q -Mate. Follow me. I want that mermaid, Cubert. Uh-oh, it's Coily. Let's get out of here. Stop! Yeah, 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 he's stuck on your a halt, Quick, into the dining room. guys blend in with the crowd. Me and Q-Mate will fool those geeks. Now, a bean sprout mustache and a lettuce hairdo. Hurry, hop onto the train. They must be in here. Get ready. Here they come. Have you seen some long-nosed nerds with a mermaid? Yeah, uh, they went into the kitchen. Thanks, pal. Uh, what for dinner uh, and supper? <laughs> That's no fish dinner, it's Q-Mate. And this waiter's really Cuban. It's time to split. Easter <laughs> I didn't see mermaids on the menu. Oh, Cuban, they're gaining on us. Keep up, you little creep. No way, snake eyes. Watch out! Is this the lasagna? Hey, is this the floor show? My slippy doos will even up the odds. you in my cabin. Here goes. Hmm, I'm starved. Hey, what are you looking at, pasta push? The spaghetti called me a man. You blew it again. Yeah, some days you don't pay to get out of bed. Now what are we gonna do, Coily? We'll have to snatch q made when we dock in Q-Exico. We're docking in Q-Exico. Like, far out. Can we go shopping? I want to buy some taco-flavored lip gloss. No way. We gotta guard the door so Coily can't steal q made Help me! Help me! Oh, help me! Ugg's got q made How'd you get her? I don't know. Maybe through the porthole. Let's go! <laughs> Those suckers fell for my trick. Now let's grab q -Mate before her nozzle-nosed pals wise up. Help! Help! Let go of me! Hey, come back, you purple pinhead! Fat chance! I'll stop him. Are you crazy or what? Hi, you suckers!
Monkeys! Okay, Ugg. Hand over Q-Mate. Yeah, me? Uh, uh, me? <laughs> and sweet Coily tricked us. We gotta get back and protect q -Maid. Ah! It's too late! He already got her! We gotta follow him. Take it to the zoo and fast! Taxi! Follow that cat! the zookeeper before Cupid gets here. They could be anywhere. I'll check the zoo. Okay, then we'll search the marketplace. Release me. Sure, you're gonna make me a celebrity. Not if I can help it. Do the trick. Fixing breakfast smells good. It's my new strawberry shortcake cereal. It's berry pink. Strawberry pink. With a crispy strawberry taste. Even smells like strawberries. My berry favorite. Most important. I know. It's a very tasty part of this good, nutritious breakfast. You're pretty bright. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> new strawberry shortcake cereal. It's Your mother said she found it in your closet. I don't know. One of the guys was... Lost the what? Look, Dad, it's Where not... Where did you get it? 
Gotta answer me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. All right. I hope you guys like him, Cubert. Um, we're going back, not as far back as the 80s, but we're going back to the 90s. Uh, for a cartoon that people have been liking, uh, I air it sporadically, and that is Mutant League. Um, I, I have people ask me, like, man, I don't remember that. And then I got to people like, I forgot about that. So, like I said, I don't think Mutant League aired locally on Saturday, though. I think it was a Sunday morning cartoon, in, at least in my market. So... But here you guys go. This is Mutant League episode uh, six. Enjoy. Today on Mutant League, it's the big volleyball match between the monsters and the heavily favored Screaming Evils, led by their star player, Madman. The monsters get some help from an unlikely source. But is he there to lead them to victory or to bury them? Stick around and find out on Mutely! So, uh, pay attention to Bones. He's gonna demonstrate something real important. You gotta anticipate, Muters. See what's coming, not what's there. Let's show him, Raze. See that? When I saw the serve going over Razor's head, I knew he would float it, so I made sure I was there waiting for it. Your court session is now over. We're lucky you're such a great coach, Bones. Thanks, but I'm not getting enough practice myself. No offense, but we need a real coach. We can't afford one. Well, that answers that. Hey, you know what? There's a program on Sandball Strategy in the virtual library. Why don't you check it out? It'll take more than a program to turn George into a real coach. It'd take a miracle. Miracles got nothing to do with it. Malicious Malone! The guy won five Mutant League championships! You swore you coached your last game! There weren't any challenges left. Until now, I could lead the monsters to the championship and make Bones MVP. Maybe so, but the reality is you were even too expensive for Prig. I'm offering my services for free to prove I can turn the team around. When we win the game, and we will, I stay on as coach and co-owner. I can't give up half the team. Think about it. The monsters lose games and lose money. As champs, they make a fortune. Come on, 
on, Neuters. We should be cranking out here. We're better than this. From where I stand, talent's not your problem. It's what you do with it. <laughs> This is whack calling practice this early. George is trying really hard to be a coach. Let's go, Muters. To the weight room. Move it, move it, move it. Ah, we're too tired, yeah. coach. Well, do what you can. <laughs> get me, get me. Man can really pound it. We can design a defense to stop him, right? I have a sponsor lined up, but another loss, and we will be back where we started. Broke. I can deliver that win, Eleanor. And more. Alone? I never thought I'd say this, but you got a deal. Tell me what I want to hear. She went for it. Marvelous. The monsters will win and you'll become 50% owner. And then that 50% will be mine. <laughs> I'm wondering that myself. I'm my own mutant. My days of working for Prig are over. Maybe these will provide some early morning inspiration. Every drop of sweat brings you closer to a championship reign. And aren't these what you're after? That's what I'm yeah. I want Sputer to set you a hundred balls, and I expect to see a hundred screaming spikes. You move like you got mutant who's in your shorts. You're the crud I wipe off the bottom of my boots before I step inside. You're nothing till I say you are. Get the message. And you, fly breath, are an embarrassment to the monsters, which is not an easy team to embarrass. You afraid of metal railing? Afraid of getting sand on that tongue of yours? What's your point? My point is, monsters, no ball in play goes untouched. If it's heading for the stands, so are you. I want to see the athletes you pathetic muters think you are. You need to outwork your competition. You need to outwork Run the other team. You need to be in better shape than your competition. You've got to trust your teammates. father. You know what it takes to win, and you go out and do it. My dad was good, wasn't he? The best. What happened to him alone? Where did he go that day? Did he leave? Or did he die? I've asked myself that a thousand times. It seemed like such a normal day. Perfect conditions for the championship game. As usual, the father was running wild. That was his best day ever. When the quake hit, I thought the world was coming to an end. 
I thought it would never stop. Why didn't anyone tell us the stadium was built over a toxic dump? Guess they figured we'd never find out. But I can still taste the putrid toxins in my lungs. Most everything after that is a blur. I lost sight of your dad. I know we went looking for you. When I saw him again, he was trapped. I couldn't free him, so I stayed with him as long as I could. But he forced me to find you, to make sure you were okay. He did? I never knew that. You were all he thought about. He was a great athlete and an even greater man. But no one has seen him since. Malone, wait. Why are you coaching us? Why do you care? Kid, you can never outrun your past. All in all, I'd rather be fishing. team's practice and I've done some reading and I think I came up with an idea that takes advantage of our team's unique abilities. Great. Let's hear it. Use Moe's head to fake a spike. Then you hit the real one. Troll heads can legally cross the net. I looked it up. George, that just might work. I'll run it by Malone. <laughs> Hello? Anybody here? Malone? There's only one place in the mutant zone where you can find that kind of spot. Something's wrong with this picture. Wasn't five years as your coach enough? Throwing a game for money was reprehensible, Malone. Lucky for me, however, since now you owe me. Malone threw a game? Succeed, and I will stop the evidence from surfacing, and your place in the Hall of Fame will remain secure. A fair trade. I get half ownership in the monsters, and your reputation is untainted. with you, bro. You look like somebody kicked you in the gut. Malone's working with Prig. Soon as we win, he's gonna sign over his half of the monsters. Oh, we could have lunched the Screaming Evils. Now I guess we gotta throw the game. No way. We don't throw the game. We never throw a game. You got that? My dad taught me to play fair. I'm not gonna stop now, but I am gonna stop Malone. Contracts ready tomorrow. Don't go through with the deal, Mrs. M. He's gonna double cross you. And I respected you. Bones! Sweetie, you must be mistaken. I heard him talking with Prig. They cut a deal. I would never trust Prig, you know that. But I do trust Malone. Prig and I were just going over some contractual problems. He is the commissioner. See? Malone's a Hall of Famer. He plays fair. He threw a game, and now Prig's using him to get the monsters, or he'll expose Malone. This isn't the time or place, boy. We can settle this after the game. Gentlemen, please! We're all on the same team here! Man, I wish that were true. Bones, you're our best player, and Malone, you're our coach. But I'm the owner, and the decision's mine. So, Bones? Please go. Malone, you always had integrity. I'm hoping nothing has changed. Don't worry. I'll talk to Bones and straighten it out. Oh, 
yes. But it will be their very last. We'll see about that. <laughs> Dig that, Bonehead! Drop it, Bones! The mutant's whack! Uh, why don't you say it to my ugly face, crazy eyes? <laughs> Madman, you're out of the game. Now, I will not tolerate unsportsmanlike behavior. Stop Malone. We've come too far. It's official. Welcome back to the Mutant League, and better yet, welcome to the Midway Monsters. First, you throw a game, and now you're going to throw away a whole team. A team that respects you? I don't expect you to understand. But let me try to explain. I had a wife once, but when she got sick, I couldn't afford the operation. I did what I had to do. There were some guys willing to give me the money if I called just a few bad plays. But it was too little too late. She died. I had to try. Now all I have left is my spot in the Hall of Fame. That's what she always wanted for me. For us. If I don't do this for Prid, he'll go public, and I can't do that to her. You really think he's gonna let you go after this? He's got you forever. It's the only chance I've got. Now get out of here. I came here to stop you any way I could, but I lost my father. I know how it is. Who knows what I would do if I thought I could have him back? But I know that if he were here, he'd tell you not to do this. We can get the real story out. It's never too late, Malone. Never. Where is it? Where even? How do I know you didn't copy these V chips? They've served their purpose. As have you. On a sad note, Hall of Famer Malicious Malone died this morning in a freak biorejuvenation what? accident. No! Apparently the chamber malfunctioned and went into auto-decontamination. Though the chamber seems to have obliterated any possible evidence, a full investigation is underway. What a shame. Kay, join me for some champagne. I was about to toast my latest acquisition. One half of the Midway Monsters. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Oh, this just in, boss. What's up, bro? It's Malone's will. Let's watch it on the vid phone in Mrs. M's office. To you, Eleanor. I give back my half-ownership of the monsters. To you, Zalgar Prig, I bequeath half-ownership of my shoes. Too bad, Zalgor, but I included a clause that makes the contract null and void if I die. What? I've been double-crossed? And to you, Bone, 
friends, my heartfelt thanks. You do your father proud. I thought you'd figure out I faked my death. Just like your father, he could hunt me down anywhere. It wasn't hard. How many times did the three of us come fishing here when I was little? Alone? Have you ever see my father? Tell him I miss him. I will, son. That I will. Grip Industries presents MLSN's Replay of the Day! Against the heavily favored and seasoned Screamin' Evils team, led by all-star player Madman, the monsters didn't seem to have a prayer. However, in an unprecedented turn of events that had Madman forcibly ejected from the game, the monsters pulled off a play that will go down in history as the Monster Head Smash. Congratulations, fellas! Gonna be a big man someday. You got mud on your face, you big disgrace. Kicking your can all over the place, singing, We will, we will rock you. We will rock you. We will, we will rock you. You are controlling the fastest train in the world. The most revolutionary machine on tracks. The incredible Super Turbo Train. So fast it travels in scale beyond the speed of sound. So powerful it can do what no other train can do. Race up a wall defying gravity. Now the ultimate. You streak upside down through the giant loop. You turn out the lights and you're in night glow. Streamlining the darkness. Take control of the fastest train in the world. Super Turbo Train. New from Tyco, of course. The, the world's fastest train is taking off. Super Turbo Train with Daredevil Jump travels in scale beyond the speed of sound. So fast, it races up a wall and even upside down. So fast, it makes the incredible Daredevil Jump and keeps on going. There's nothing else like it. Take control of the fastest and only airborne train. The new Super Turbo Train with Daredevil Jump from Tyco. Here's the real thing in racing thrills. Here are Tonka's new power punchers, pocket-sized cars. You can rev them up and pow, pow, power punchers. You can race them and run them, jump them and bump them. A Tonka toy built Tonka Tonka for fun, fun, fun. A pocket full of fun, power punchers, each sold separately. New from Tonka. I hope you guys are still liking Mutant League. I know some people get upset that I do 90s cartoons. Um, hey, I, I'll, hey, I'm go I've gone back to the 70s. I can go to the 90s. I'm giving the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, I guess if I find something cool that I want to share from the from the uh, 2000s, I will because it's my show, and that's what I want to do. And I might go back to the 60s. So it will definitely do the 60s. Maybe on the uh, Saturday All Day show. So, all right. Has anybody been thinking about what they're what they what they like that's gone? Um, I nowadays we get the the Mountain Dew in in waves. So you get like Pitch Black, or you get uh, Volt, or you Voltage, or you get uh, you know. Right now you've got Spark. You know, and you got Major Melon or Thrashed Apple. That stuff comes and goes. Man, back when, when back in the day, you had sodas. That the sodas came and then went like Slice. Uh, I found a can of Slice a while back and uh, ended up selling it. 
Um, because I was like, ah, what are we going to do? And somebody goes, hey, what are you doing with that? I'm like, I don't know. It's like, you want to sell it? I was like, sure. Because the last thing I need is a pop sitting around for my kid to find and try to open and drink a 40-year-old soda. Or my nieces or nephews. So I can't, I can't have something like that. So, but, but I do remember Slice being in all different flavors. Uh, I also remember the crushes, all the different flavor crushes. Uh, like Strawberry Crush and Grape Crush. And now that I think I've seen Watermelon Crush, which is weird because that didn't exist back then. Uh, but I drank the hell out of some Orange Crush and Grape Crush and Strawberry Crush. So, but here we go. We're going back to another cartoon. I tend to put these in pairs, and I don't know why. I never set out to do this, but I, I, I do. It's it's a pair. So we're doing Skeleton Warriors. Uh, Skeleton Warriors are kind of cool. Yet again, I think it was another cartoon that was kind of ahead of its time, where the toy line is kind of ahead of its time, because they had the interchanging Majulok-looking figures, uh, kind of like what they did with uh, Majulok and uh, He-Man. So I'll battle the parts. So this is a Skeletal Warriors episode uh, six. Yeah, that's right, six. Enjoy. These are the tales of the Skeleton Warriors. <laughs> Battlefield of all can be the theater of the mind. There, the epic struggle rages every waking moment, and even sleep brings no peace. to me now. Not as long as I have an arm to strike with and two legs to stand on. Ah, but you don't, dear boy. Bon voyage. <laughs> it's all right, Joshua. You were having a nightmare. <sighs> Second night in a row. Baron Dark. Controlling me. Yeah? I had him, Cyborn! And he slipped through my fingers. What's important, Baron, is that the device works. Some minor adjustments should be all that's necessary. Well then, do them! Patience, dear Baron. You forget we're dealing with an outmoded technology developed by a long dead inventor. Fortunately, this Dr. Janoff was painstaking in keeping journals of her work. My dream infiltration device allows the operator to enter the servo space of its subject by means of hollow projection. 
thereby helping to remedy sleep disorders and induce gentle, soothing dreams. Ah, how sickeningly sweet, gentle, soothing dreams. Ah, I'm afraid the good doctor lacked imagination. None is your equal in that department, Baron Dark. With this little darling, I shall gain complete control over Grimskull's brain. And then the Light Star Crystal shall be mine. There it is. They've been working on this construction site non-stop for a fortnight. Must be a big deal. Baron Dark's lackeys aren't exactly known for working overtime. Our sources in the Resistance tell us it's to be a human labor camp. Slavery is Baron Dark's reward for those too pure of heart to be changed into skeleton warriors. Justin! I'm... I'm sorry, Joshua. That was thoughtless of me. He hasn't gotten much sleep lately. He keeps having terrible nightmares. Hey! No sleeping at your post, soldier! <laughs> Uh, who's sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> uh, perhaps it's best if you stayed behind, Grimskull. This raid demands total concentration, one misstep, and... <sighs> uh, I'm fine, Uncle. And every bit as able to pull my weight as any one of you. You sly old fox. You angered him on purpose. <laughs> As your father always said, nothing beats a little fire in the belly to ready a soldier for battle. We'll wait until the moon is high, and then we strike. What a storehouse of treasures we've stumbled upon, Cyborn. Who knew that such a garden of delights even existed? No one! Not until I uncovered Dr. Janos' records while pilfering through the palace library. Yes, but it was Bad Dog's keen tracking sense that led us here. Oh, look. He wants to play. Cyborg, I said he wants to play. I've located the problem plaguing the dream infiltration device. Should be up and working shortly. Excellent, Dr. Cyborn. My bones are simply aching to crawl inside Grimskull's brain and destroy it. Oh, just me luck pulling sentry duty on a moist night such as this. Ha! Me elbow gets all stiff from the damp it does. Oh, a nice bonfire would warm me bones nicely. <laughs> now, where'd I put them phosphorus sticks? Need a light? Oh, don't mind if I do. Don't mention it. Let's get the rest of these planted while Lightstar and Talon... Look out! We'll sizzle them good this time. Don't you boneheads know a surprise attack only works once? Love the outfit around you, but you know what you'd look better in? A big vat of quickset mortanium. Now that's the ugliest statue I've ever seen. Ah! I always did have a crush on Prince Justin. Oh, guess I crushed him good this time. <laughs> hey, Shriek! <laughs> Where's Guardian? He grabbed your sky cycle, said to meet him on the bridge. Look at those cowards run. They ought to be called the Legion of Flight. 
<laughs> Skate them off good, we did. Baron's gonna be right proud of us, he is. What's that? We did it, Guardian! Their human slave camp has been destroyed! But how long before others go up in their place? Sound the alarms! Close off all escape routes! They won't get away! Every skeleton in the city will be on our tail in a matter of minutes! If we split up, we'll make less of a target. Talon and I will go back the way we came. And Grimskull and I will cut through luminosity! Last one back at base camp's a rotten skeleton warrior! Uncle, don't even joke about that! Stay low to the ground. The skeleton's radar won't be able to pick us up. I'm all for that. <sighs> what is it, Joshua? My head. <sighs> Rocky. You've got to get control of your cycle. I'm trying. Feel faint. <sighs> Hang on, boy. What is it, boy? Baron Dark. Yes, Grim Skull. I'm inside you now, and the nightmare's just beginning. <laughs> Signal. Baron Dark. Joshua? What's happened to him? I don't know. He needs medical attention, but I fear moving him. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. I'm Lucius, resistance leader, Sector 3. Come, there is a safe house nearby. Wait, how do we know you're who you say you are? Forgive me, my liege. To root out the darkness, set evil to right. This is our pledge. The, the Legion, Legion of Light. Light. Lead the way, good Lucius. Prince Joshua can stay here as long as he needs to. The king was always very kind to my family. Selene lost her husband and son to the skeleton warriors. He's not struggling anymore. That's a good sign, isn't it? I don't know, Talon. My husband is... Uh, was a doctor. This was his medical bag. Maybe this alpha scan can provide some answers. Physically, I don't see anything wrong with him. What is it, Uncle? His eyes don't respond. Oh, it's as I feared. He slipped into a coma. Expecting you, Grimskull. Do come in. What is this place? <laughs> Don't you know? It's your mind. Not a pretty sight, is it? Actually, it's not your mind anymore. I'm pulling the strings now. You'll do as I command. Agreed? Excellent. Now, be a good boy and tell me the location of... What's that? <gasps> what is the meaning of this? Means of hollow Infernal woman is ruining everything! Hmm. Most strange. Janoff's encoded journal must have somehow melded with the holoprojection. 
Ah! Spare me the scientific mumbo jumbo. Just give me the bare bones of it. Plain and simple, dear Baron. She's a virus. A ghost in the machine. Then do what you would do to any virus, good doctor. Kill her. <laughs> What is it, Lucius? Doc's men are doing a house-to-house -house search. We need to move Prince Joshua to more secure surroundings. Not in his condition. It's too risky. My brother will not be moved. So be it. My men and I will hold off the bony beasts as long as we can. What's that gadget do? It's called a cranio scan. It picks up irregularities in the unconscious and can... I don't believe it. What was that, Uncle? My... my old mentor and teacher, Dr. Augusta Janov. I just saw her in Grimskull's cranio scan. So, what are you saying? Many years ago, in your father's court, I studied under Dr. Janov. She was as brilliant as I was impertinent. We often argued. You say your inventions are for the good of mankind, but what if they fell into the wrong hands? Couldn't they be used for evil? Knowledge, progress, those are our concerns. There's no good or evil in science. Yes, but there is evil in the world. It's an argument we never resolved. Later in her life, Dr. Janoff became very secretive and moved her laboratory to a remote location even I wasn't privy to. What does all this have to do with Joshua? It was rumored that late in life, Dr. Janoff perfected a dream infiltration device. She meant it to be a boon to mankind, a cure for sleep disorders and nightmares. But in the wrong hands... Baron Dark! That explains the nightmares Joshua's been having. We have to stop Baron Dark before he destroys Grimskull's mind. But what of his body? It's too dangerous to move him. Yet, we can't leave him here unguarded. Not with Baron Dark's warriors going house to house on a search and destroy mission. I'll stay with him. And I pity the skeleton who tries to get in the door. Now how exactly do we locate Dr. Janov's hideaway, Uncle? I've got the Sky Cycle's flat screen hooked into Grimskull's cranio scan readout. The closer we get to the source, the stronger the signal should become. Hang in there, Joshua. I'm right here. Crawl into my web, set the Baron to the fly. You'll get a charge out of this. Playtime is over. Now tell me the whereabouts of the other half of the Light Star Crystal. Never. Never is a very long time. And I'm not sure you'll live that long. Look everywhere. Tear the place apart. The skeleton guards are next door. You're looking for the royals? I saw them go this way. Show us! Went in there. Baron Dark will reward you for this. I just got my reward. Signal strong. It's coming from inside this mountain. We only need to find an entrance way. We just found one. The pleasure? Be my guest. <laughs> and now, Grimskull, it's time. What? All right, Dark. It's over. Step away from the dream machine. Oh, I don't think so. 
You see, I've got young Grimskull in a very, shall we say, uncomfortable position right now. See for yourself. Ever hear the old saying that if you die in your dream, you die for real? Wouldn't care to test it out on baby brother now, would you? Justin, go away. It's too dangerous. Dark rules this place. No! This is your mind! This is your dream! You can control it! Can't. My strength is gone. Then draw strength from your family! Guardian and I stand beside you. Oh, how very touching. Sheer nonsense, of course, but touching nevertheless. Destroy the equipment and you'll destroy Grimskull. And that's my prerogative. Tell me where the Light Star Crystal is hidden, or in you go. Draw strength from your family. I'm right here. Hang on. No, I won't let you defeat me. I, 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 what is this? You, you must obey me. Stop this impertinence. Like the man said, Bon Voyage! He... defeated me. We all did, Baron. Huh? Sweet dreams. Get out of here. 60 seconds till detonation. What about you? I'll be along. Go! Dream infiltration I, device. I just wanted to Operated say goodbye, old friend. Space. Colleague. Means of Teacher. Projection. On. No! <laughs> Don't look so surprised. Old fools like me never die, they just get crankier. Let's go home. In Baron Dark's defeat, I learned where our real power lies. It's not in our weapons, not even in the Light Star Crystal, but in our strength as a family. You've won this battle, Legion of Light, but I shall live to fight another day. I always do. <laughs> Loyalty, family, unity. Mere words went scribbled on a page, but powerful weapons went etched upon a warrior's heart. Strong enough to defeat the forces of evil? Who can say? Perhaps I should sleep on it.
And then, and then every cartoon had to have the CGI. Um, you know, I, I had somebody because I posted about how bad the CGI was on the trans, the, the Beast Wars Transformers. I'm not saying I don't still like it. I like Beast Wars Transformers, the American one. I like the Japanese better, though, because man, they just they had cooler Transformers, and it was the original uh, anime style, almost anime style artwork, and uh, we just the stuff we never got here in America. And it's disappointing, man. We didn't get Leo Convoy. So we never got the Optimus Prime line. We got Optimus Prime, but we got the monkey. And I know what people are going to say is uh, gorillas are not monkeys. They're great apes, which I know. I just like calling him a monkey. As like I'd call Megatron the big lizard. Uh, he's a dinosaur, which is not a lizard. So... <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy Skeleton Warriors. As I rant and rave about other stuff. But, uh, alright, still talking snacks and cookies, cereal, and all that stuff. And I, I've, I've, I've got a, 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 a soft spot in my heart for G.I. Joe action stars, 3PO cereal, and Smurfberry Crunch. I ate the hell out of some Smurfberry Crunch back when I was a kid. Miss Smurfberry Crunch. You know, I thought for sure they would have brought that back when they brought back the Smurfs. I, 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 I fingers crossed. So even when we brought back the uh, Ghostbuster cereal, but we end up getting a whole different type of Ghostbuster cereal. And same thing when we brought the, the Star Wars cereal. We got a whole new generation of Star Wars cereals. But it's actually just old cereal, just another type of cereal that they put in a box and claim it's that cereal. But slightly different, either marshmallows or, you know, pieces. We don't get the cool stuff like we did back in the day. All right, here we go. This is one from last week that I tested out, and we're doing Shazam. Uh, did not think I was going to get Shazam past the uh, the YouTube bots there, and uh, we did. Um, so we're doing it again this week. Uh, you know, because between it being a DC cartoon and filmation, uh, I didn't have the best best you know think it was gonna work out but it did and here we are so we're going to continue to do it it's not a whole lot of episodes so you know it's like it's like the other ones there's like 13 episodes so but here you guys go this is shazam this is episode two and it's the incredible shrink city or shrinking city sorry my bad i'm sitting there trying to read and i can't so enjoy. This is Billy Batson, star reporter for station WIZZ TV. He has been picked by the aged wizard Shazam to carry on the wizard's lifelong crusade against crime and the forces of evil. When Billy speaks the wizard's name, Shazam! Billy becomes Captain Marvel, mighty champion, combining the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. Billy's twin sister, Mary Batson, has also been granted special power. When she speaks the name, Shazam! Mary Batson becomes Mary Marvel, blending the grace of Selena with the best qualities of other goddesses whose names combined form the word Shazam. The third member of the mighty trio is their friend, lame newsboy, Freddie Freeman, when he speaks the name of his idol, Captain Marvel! Freddie becomes the powerful Captain Marvel Jr. Together, they are the mighty Marvel, dedicated to fighting the forces of evil throughout the universe. A sunny summer's day finds our heroes, Billy and Mary Batson, relaxing in the city park. Heads up, Billy. Hey, sis, not a bad throw for a girl. Hey, Freddy, want to take a shot at it? Let her go, Billy. Uh-oh, I 
missed. Not a bad try <laughs> for a boy. Yes, all seems well, but villains never take a day off. Careful, kids. That simple ice cream man is not all he seems. Ice cream. Get your cool, delicious ice cream here. 385 yummy flavors. Ice cream. <laughs> Gee, we're sorry, mister. Are you okay? Pesky kids, why don't you watch what you're doing? We're really sorry. It was an accident. The least we can do is check your wagon for you. A and we'll gladly pay for any damages. Now get away from that. Don't touch that cart. I mean, you've done enough. Now, now, please, please, please go away. Uh, okay, mister. Uh, we were just trying to help. Boy, how can anybody who sells ice cream be so grumpy? What's going on out there, Savannah? It's all clear, Mr. Mind. Our disguise fooled those meddling Marvel brats. It's about time. <laughs> I was getting cold in there. Not to worry, my little partner. In a few seconds, we will savor our long-awaited triumph over the Marvel family. Behold! <laughs> One blast from our mind warper will drive all memory of the magic word Shazam from the Marvel family's brains. They'll be unable to summon their superpowers ever again. <laughs> but Savannah, you, you, you're forgetting it. Here they come again. Quick, we must activate the mind warper. In all the confusion, we forgot to pick up our flying saucer. I hope that ice cream man has cooled down a little. That was no ice cream man, Billy. Look! Holy moly! It's Dr. Savannah and Mr. Mind! Right, Billy Batson! And it's also your finish! Sh... Sh... Uh, 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 what were we going to say? I can't remember. <laughs> We've done it! We've done it, Mr. Mind! The marbles are ruined! Not all of us, Savannah. You forgot. To summon my powers, all I have to do is say the name of my favorite hero, Captain Marvel! Ah! Oh, no! I tried to tell you, fool. Ray has no effect on Captain Marvel Jr. It's not going to have any effect on anything when I'm done with it. That takes care of their evil invention. Shazam! Let's get out of here! Hey! Wait, 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 wait for me! Hold it, Savannah. <laughs> More on Mr. Mind. Why didn't he remind me about Captain Marvel Jr.? Those marvels. No, no, unhand me, you big red cheese. I wonder where Mr. Mind went. Oh, well, maybe she'll mistake me for a blade of grass. Ooh, when I get my neck on that savannah. Aha! Uh -huh. There's that little worm. You, Mr. Mind. <laughs> oh, he got away. That's okay, Mary. I think Mr. Mind's finished for now. Anyway, we may have lost our worm, but we still hooked this fish for the authorities. Ah, no jail can hold Dr. Savannah for long. And besides, marble dolts, you still have my partner, Mr. Mind, to reckon with. <laughs>
station whiz where Billy Batson does his nightly news show. We can rest easier now that Dr. Savannah is back behind bars. But that creepy Mr. Mind is still on the loose. Yes, Miss Jameson? Billy, there are two rather, uh, odd-looking gentlemen asking for you out here. Uh, what do you mean, odd? Well, one of them has a tail. That has to be Uncle Dudley and Mr. Tawny. I'll be out in a minute. I tell you, Mr. Morris, my latest invention will make a mint for your station. Dudley, if you think I'm going to give you free airtime to plug another of your cockamamie inventions... Cockamamie, he calls it? Tisk, tisk. Morris, old boy, the Uncle Dudley patented dry ice machine is the greatest boon to mankind since Edison invented the cotton gin. For your information, Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin, and it is this precise lack of knowledge on your part that urges me to ask you to leave the premises. In other words, Dudley, get out and take that dabby overgrown pussycat with you. Ah, but you haven't seen our ice machine's many handy uses. Here's a trick that's fun at any party. Simply take one ordinary cup of water, add one cube of dry ice, and presto! Instant smoke screen! Uh, holy moly, what's going on out here? Help! He's not. Go oh, well, back to the old drawing board. Great Godfrey, did my ice cube do all that? Holy moly, you're not gonna believe this. It's a huge sinkhole, and it's swallowing up the whole city. I've got to move fast to save those kids. Shazam! State Tower. Uh oh. The captain may need some help. Shazam! Holy moly! What's going on? The building. It's gonna fall. Captain Marvel! family. I would have been out there to lead the rescue, but the old Shazam Bagel is acting up. <laughs> oh, sure, Uncle Dudley. We understand. What I don't understand is how those sinkholes started in the first place. The drought, I guess. <laughs> Since we haven't had any rain for months, the ground probably just crumbled away. <laughs> Wrong, Marvel fools! Mr. Mind! Those disasters were no accident. Rather, they were only a sample of the havoc to be unleashed by my terrible all-worm army. We'll turn this town into a valley of gaping craters unless Captain Marvel helps make me the new king of the world. No way, Worm. Captain Marvel would never give in to you. Just one hour to reconsider. And if he still refuses, my army and I will level this city and leave nothing but giant crumbles. Have a nice day. Holy moly, the worm has turned. 
How will Captain Marvel, the world's mightiest mortal, cope with this chilling challenge from Mr. Mind, the world's mightiest might? Stay tuned and see. Facing the threatened destruction of the city by Mr. Mind's army of worms, the Marvels are momentarily stumped. We can't give in to Mr. Mind, but if we don't, his worms will destroy the city. If only we had some clue to his army's whereabouts. What do you think, Uncle Dudley? Uncle Dudley? He's gone. Just what is that thing, Uncle Dudley? Uh, one of my earlier inventions, the Uncle Dudley patented worm finder. With any luck, it should lead us right to Mr. Mind. Eureka! They should be right under here. Look, a cave that leads underground. Come on, Mr. Tawny. See anything? Nothing. Are you sure that worm finder contraption really works? Listen to that. It's coming from behind that rock. Oh, dear me. Do you see what I see? It's a worm convention. I think somebody's garden is in for big trouble. Quiet! Quiet, please! Thank you for coming. It is my pleasure to introduce a worm amongst worms. A worm who knows the meaning of the word slimy. I give you Mr. Mind! <laughs> Lend me your antennas. Our moment of triumph is here. We worms have good reason to hate humans. After all, how many of our brethren have been taken on fishing trips, only to find out later it's a one-way trip? Uh oh I don't like the looks of this. Since the humans refuse to acknowledge me as their rightful ruler, we must go forth and take the surface world for ourselves. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Uncle Dudley! It's Mr. Mind! His worm troops are headed for town! We have to have a plan. Mr. Tawny, what are worms afraid of most? Let's see. <laughs> There's birds, fish hooks, rain. Rain? Of course. When it rains, it floods the worms right to the surface where they're helpless. But that doesn't do us any good. It hasn't rained in months. Ahem. Uh, the Uncle Dudley patented dry ice machine to the rescue. We can seed the clouds with Uncle Dudley's dry ice and make it rain. That's right, Billy. A mere flick of the switch and voila! Don't worry, it just needs a wee bit of fine tuning. It's working. Of course. <laughs> well, we we'll figure out how to turn it off when we're finished. I see them. They're headed for the city, all right. I hope Mary found something big enough to put all that dry ice in. Will these do? That's perfect, sis. Come on, Freddy. It's time for us to get in the act. Captain Marvel! Shazam! Everybody get a full load and follow me. We've got the ice in those dark thunderclouds ahead. Bombs away! But at that moment, Mr. Mind's troops strike at the farmer's market. Uh, hey, what, what's going on here? <laughs> Look at them run. After my worm warriors devour the farmer's market, we'll move on to the big stuff.
Mr. Mind's glorious worm army. Now his troops are nothing but breakfast for a flock of magpies. But what happened to Mr. Mind himself? I don't know, but if he's planning any new tricks, you can bet the Marvel family will be there to stop him. And you can bet you haven't seen the last of Mr. Mind when I... Hey guys, as long as we're here, let's pick up some apples. These look perfect for my new applesauce recipe. Did she say applesauce? I know a good applesauce recipe, too. Uh, first, you chop up the apples. Yay! Let me out of here! Then you boil them over a hot flame. You marbles make me boil, all right. But someday, I'm going to put you in my recipe for red cheese on you. So ends another adventure with the Mighty Marble. You won't want to miss the next exciting adventure with star reporter Billy Batson, his sister Mary, their friend Freddie Freeman, lovable Uncle Dudley, and that amazing talking tiger, Mr. Tawny. Adventure, that's what you get when you drive Tonka trucks like Mud Runner, Roving Wrecker, and Jeep CJ, each sold separately. Trucks so rugged, so powerful, you know they're Tonkas. Someday you'll be driving one of these. Till then, keep driving those Tonkas. Why don't you try? Drive a Tonka! Mud Runner, Jeep CJ, and Roving Wrecker come with everything shown here, each sold separately from Tonka. Come with me to a place. You'll be glad that you did. Yeah. It's so much more, oh, what a store with Toys R Us kids. It's a magical land, so where else would you go? When everything's at Toys R Us and prices are low. It's new and hot, it's, it's a toy they've got. And the prices are hard to beat. Oh, You can search the whole world, but Toys R Us kids know. It's the one and only place to go. For games, for toys, oh, fun! It's the world's biggest Toys R Us. So, okay, before, before I forget, yes, that's new. Yes, that is Radine. Yes, he's got the firing missile and the firing hand. And, uh, yes, I do have Shogun Warriors. And, uh, no, they're not for sale. Uh, those are ones that I want, uh, when I get, when I die and I get cremated, those get thrown in the furnace with me. Because I'm taking them with, no. No, those are good to my kids. Um, hey, I hope you like, guys are still liking stuff. I'm not putting nothing at the end of this episode, so... There's no no post credit stuff, so you know I, I wish movie theaters would do this. So at the end of a movie, they should have the actor come out and go, "Hey, no post credits, just credits." So if you need to leave now, go ahead and leave. If you want to be cool and watch the credits, so you can see all the people that worked on this movie, you can see all the people that worked on this movie. Uh, if you want to stay after the see my credits uh, and see the people that worked on this episode, um, you'll find out that it's usually it's me. I, I work on this episode. Um, so this is a heads up. There's nothing after the credits. Nothing. I don't know why I keep pointing. That that that's like weird, but it is what it is. So, as always, just because you grow older doesn't mean you have to grow up. There's always time for cartoons. Uh, you can watch my other shows, Sci Friday, every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm going to give myself a break on that show because I'm going to work on not the next episode because that's 52, but 53. Episode 53 will be a full year. And I think I'm going to put together the, the Saturday all day. Uh, I'm working on stuff I can put in there. Uh, I don't even know how long it's going to take me to upload this because it's going to be definitely like eight hours. Um, 
So be prepared. That's going to be uh, Saturday morning cartoons. There's going to be, I'm looking at putting wrestling. I'm looking at putting uh, a Kung Fu movie. Uh, I don't know. We're, we're going to figure out what we're doing, and I'm working on that currently. So, you know, if you guys want to see it, if you if you guys can set through eight hours uh, of me hosting other stuff besides cartoons and sci-fi shows, uh, let me know. If you don't want me to do it, let me know, because then that will save me time and I can go back to working on the other shows. So, as always, take care. I will see you there every Saturday, every Friday, and every Monday. Uh, i got some great interviews coming up on Group Therapy TV Podcast. So I will see you all later and have a good day.